A very good afternoon to one and all present here. I welcome you all to the faculty development program. Yeah. I welcome you all to the faculty development program organized by the Society for Nursing Practices and BioLeaks. I would like to express I would like to express my gratitude to each and every one of you for being here with us today. We are very pleased to be able to welcome our premium members, those of you that have been with us for a long time now, as well as those who are new to the Society for Nursing Practices. Before we get started, I would like to express my sincere appreciation to the organizing team members and the team who worked hard, which helped us to make this event a success. I would like to give a brief introduction about the Society for Nursing Practices, in short, SFNP. Society for Nursing Practices is one of the renowned leading professional associations caring for people. Society for Nursing Practice is a non-profitable professional association meant for development in the field of nursing science and healthcare. It is an international forum for nurses for sharing knowledge and innovation, which aims to bring together nurses to encourage intellectual development and providing opportunities for networking and collaboration. SFNP meets with its objectives through academic networking, meetings, conferences, projects, academic awards, and publications. SFNP strives to enrich from its diverse group of advisory members. It brings together nurses from nook and corner of the world. SFNP delivers access to its members, the industry's most essential technical information by organizing conferences, workshops, annual convention meetings, and provides networking opportunities both locally and globally. Members have the opportunity to stay updated in their chosen field of expertise, connecting with peers and investing in their future. I would like to give a little bit of an introduction about BioLeaks. BioLeaks is a not-for-profit professional association which prominently promotes research and development. We at BioLeaks have brought a revolution in the field of global conferences BioLeaks events and conferences brings together the professional wizards and leaders who have explored all avenues to reinforce in the field of life sciences and medicine technology. It conducts events worldwide which help in enhancing the skill set of the people from diverse industries and forms a common platform for eminent personalities, physicians, researchers, doctors, academicians, professional business figures, and so many more. About faculty development program. SFNP is organizing a faculty development program on effective teaching strategies in nursing education from the 16th, 17th, and 18th of March, 2023. The objective of this faculty development program is to nurture the philosophy of effective teaching strategies and to identify the best teaching strategies to sustain and promote nursing students' engagement in academic and clinical setting as it has always been a challenge for nursing educators. Faculty development program is intended to build the capacity of the young faculty members, head of the department's principal, so as to facilitate its institution in the teaching learning system and other and other academic processes of the institution. It is essential to provide a set of strategies for maintaining and enhancing the academic engagement of nursing facilities. Before we kickstart today's program, on behalf of the Society for Nursing Practices, I would like to welcome our organizers from SFNP. Okay, uh, before that, I would just like to announce that we are facing a technical glitch on our site. So please just hang in there for two minutes. We'll be right back. Thank you for your patience.
Thank you again. Uh, before we start today's program, I would like to welcome the organizers from the Society for Nursing Practice, Mr. Rudra Banu Satpati, founder and CEO, SFNP BioLeaks India. And I would like to extend my warm welcome to the organizing chairperson, Dr. Sherin Sara Koshi, Professor, Department of Obstetrics and Gynecological Nursing, KIMS College of Nursing, Trivandrum, Kerala. Organizing Secretary, Dr. D.T. George, Professor, Department of Obstetrics and Gynecological Nursing, PRS College of Nursing, Kerala. Joint Secretary, Dr. Bahubali, J.G., Associate Professor, HOD, Psychiatric Nursing, Bharati Vidyapit, Dean to be University, College of Nursing, Sangli, Maharashtra. I also would like to welcome all our keynote speakers who are going to fulfill our needs of nursing education with various innovative and informative sessions. I would like to welcome Dr. Saba Nathul Misriya Jalal, Assistant Professor, Nursing, College of Applied Medical Sciences, King Faisal University, al Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Dr. Giti George, Professor, Department of Obstetrics and Gynecological Nursing, PRS College of Nursing, Kerala. Dr. Bahubali, JG, Associate Professor, Head of the Department, Psychiatric Nursing, Bharati Vidyapit, Dean to be University, College of Nursing, Sangli, Maharashtra. Mr. Abhi Chakho Thomas, Clinical Instructor, Emergency Department, Parwania Hospital, Kuwait. Dr. Sherin Sarakoshi, Professor, Department of Obstetrics, Gynecological Nursing, KIMS College of Nursing, Trivandrum, Kerala. Dr. Miriam C.A. Wagoro, Chair, Department of Nursing Sciences, University of Nairobi, Kenya. Professor Shuli Sen, Principal, Tirthankar Parshwant, College of Nursing, Tirthankar Mahavir University, Moradabad, Uttar Pradesh. Mr. Eba Abdisa, Chief Academic and Research Director, Institute of Health Sciences, Bolega University, Ethiopia. Dr. S. Vasanta Kumari, Associate Professor, Department of Pediatric and Neonatal Nursing, Institute of Health Sciences, Bolega University, Ethiopia. Dr. K. Lata, Dean Cum Principal, Narayan Nursing College, Gopal Narayan Singh University, Bihar, India. Dr. Seema Singh, Principal and Professor, Srimati Radhika Bai Mege Memorial College of Nursing, DMIMS, Maharashtra, India. Dr. Geeta C, Professor, Child Health Nursing, Kasturipa Gandhi Nursing College, Sri Balaji Vidyapit, deemed to be University, Puducherry. Ms. Sachanta Bhattacharya, Tutor, Rufeda, College of Nursing and Assistant Proctor, Jamia Hamdar, deemed to be University, New Delhi, India. J. Nesamani Sonja, Assistant Professor, Department of OBG, College of Nursing, Aligarh Muslim University, Aligarh, India. We welcome you all once again. Secondly, I would like to extend my sincere gratitude and warm welcome to all the participants who have actively joined this event. Once again, I welcome you all. Now, I would like to hand over the session to our organizing chairperson, Dr. Sherin Sara Koshi, Professor, Department of Obstetrics and Gynecological Nursing, KIMS College of Nursing, Trivandrum, Kerala, to render the welcome message and address the gathering. Hi, ma'am. Hello. Hello, ma'am. Ah, can hear you, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma You're audible. Yes, yes. Good afternoon to one and all. It gives me an immense pleasure to start this faculty development program on effective teaching strategies in nursing education by heartily welcoming everyone. At the outset, my special congratulations to the organizing team, SFNP, Society for Nursing Practices for having organized such a wonderful development program for nursing faculties, students, and nurses. The major objective of SFNP is the career development of the nursing faculties and the personality development of the nurses and overall development of the nursing society. Mr. Rudra Banu Satpadi, founder and CEO of SFNP Biolix, Dr. Sonali Jana, Chief Executive Manager of SFNP Biolix, Ms. Sushmita Lawrence, Senior Associate Manager, SFNP. Ma'ams, the organizing committee, thank you. And I am so grateful to you, ma'am, for such an initiative. FKP is intended to build the capacity of the young faculty members to facilitate 
and improve the teaching learning system and other academic courses of the institution. We know the nursing education is undergoing tremendous changes with the changing needs of the rapidly changing society. Now, I take this opportunity to welcome all those who gathered here to the FDP program. First of all, I welcome today's webinars, Organizing Secretary, Dr. G.T. George, Professor at HOD Department of Obstetrics and Gynecological Nursing, PRS College, Rwanda, and our Joint Secretary, Dr. Bahubali J.G., Associate Professor, HOD, Psychiatric Nursing, Pardee Vidya Pet, Maharashtra. I am so grateful that principals and other faculty members from different colleges and from different countries be a part of this today's program. Hearty welcome to our eminent speakers for the three days faculty development program. We are so pleased to have you amongst us today, the first day for FDP. We have the knowledgeable speakers. And thank you so much for agreeing to share your valuable knowledge to our participants today. We assure you that this webinar will prove very insightful as we have a very good lineup of eminent speakers. And we hope the session enriched your knowledge. Once again, I welcome you all. Thank you, ma'am. That brings us to the end of the inauguration. I would like to share an interesting update from SFNP on our upcoming event. After the grand successful nursing conferences in the previous years, Society for Nursing Practices and BioLeaks is organizing the sixth international conference on nursing science and healthcare virtually on the 18th and 19th May, 2023. The conference will emphasize on the theme, Nurses Together for Global Health Advancements. Sixth ICNSH is a multidisciplinary program with broad participation with members from around the globe, focusing on learning about various facets of nursing and healthcare research. Various nursing professionals, including speakers from global areas, researchers, nursing practitioners, academicians, healthcare professionals, midwives, clinicians, healthcare industry personals, and students from around the world will be present outstanding research that, that informs improvements in nursing practice education and management at this conference. Here are some glimpses of, from the previous physical and virtual nursing conferences organized by SFNP. This is a great forum for all to present your research papers and review abstracts in front of the nursing experts and academicians and best presentation will be certified. You can register and join as a listener or as a presenter. The forum is still open for academic partnership for the nursing colleges and universities, and we welcome our renowned colleges for the academic partnership with this global event. So I would like every participant to use this great opportunity. Once again, I welcome each and every one of you to the day one of the faculty development program. Now, I would like to welcome our first speaker for the event, Dr. Sabanathul Nisiria Jalal, Assistant Professor, Nursing, College of Applied Medical Sciences, King Faisal University, al Asa, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, to deliver the session on educational technology. Hello, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You're audible. Good afternoon, ma'am. Okay, good afternoon. Uh, wait a minute. I will share my screen. Okay, ma'am.
Is this visible now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I am very honored to be a uh, part of a keynote speaker in this uh, very great uh, organization. And, uh, and I'm the first speaker. I would like to talk about educational technology today with you. So before going to talk about that topic, I would like to mention a quote here. So the technology will never replace the great teachers, but technology is the is in the hands of great teachers and also it's a transformational. It was, uh, it, this was uh, stated by uh, George Pioros. So we have to understand here the technology never replace the teachers, always the students need teachers. So here I have uh, in my session today, I'm going to have some of the topics uh, which I'm going to outline, which are educational technology, the definition, and uh, uh, why, what is the purpose, and uh, technology-based in teaching methods, and how we are having the technology integration, and what is the evolution of learning. And also we are going to talk about this YM and virtual reality. So actually, you know, the educational technology is the field of study that investigates the process of uh, analyzing, designing, developing, implementing, and evaluating the instructional environment, also the learning materials and learners, and also the learning process in order to improve the teaching and learning. One of the important definition also for the educational technology is, which is focusing on the technological tools and media that assist in the communication of knowledge, its development and exchange. So here is the question, why the educational technology in education is important? Yes, of course, it's important because it helps today's teachers to integrate new technologies and tools in their classrooms while teaching. And also it upgrades and improve the learner centeredness of their classroom. So it will be more focusing towards the uh, student center. And also this will engage the students in a unique way and innovative and equitable ways. And it helps to expand their network and connect with other teachers and educators nationally as well as globally. So they may have a, a great collaboration because of this. And not only that, this will prepare the students for their future careers. And it helps to support the different learning styles. They can use it. And also it improves the digital citizenship because now, nowadays we are very easy goers and we are going with everything digitalization. Our uh, nation is focusing on that. Also it enhances learning experiences. It will increase the students, will become more responsible. What is the technology-based teaching methods? Actually the technology-based teaching methods constitute the learning that is through electronics technology, which may include uh, internet, intranet, satellite broadcast, audio and video conferencing, bulletin boards, chat rooms, webcasts, CD-ROMs, and whatnot. So we will be uh, talking about one by one plus the internet. You all know that the internet is very, very mandatory to have this e-learning. Um, actually, you know, the internet, which is a learning system based on formalized teaching, but it, which with the help of electronic resources, uh, we will be using this mostly in e-learning as well as in the distance learning. While well, teaching can be based on our, um, out of the classrooms, the use of computers and internet forms the major component of e-learning. Actually, you all know that during the pandemic situations, this was uh, helped a lot to continue our education. And intranet means, Intranet is a private network that will be contained within the university that is used to securely sh to share the educational information and computing the resources. So an intranet can also be used for working in group as well as in the teleconferences like that. So every university is now, they are using this intranet, even uh, putting the attendance, sharing the question bank or conducting the exam, so many even sending the, sharing the resources, so many things we are using this intranet. 
Next about the satellite broadcast. This is a system of content distributing using broadcast signal relayed to and from the communication satellite. So then this will be received from this uh, big antenna or we will be using such, something like a fishes. So the signal are then passed through a low noise block converter for conditioning. Next is about the audio and video conferencing. So what we are doing is a video conferencing. So you from all over the places, you can see what I'm talking, right? That's the best uh, thing here. And uh, bulletin board, bulletin board actually it can be used to stimulate the student thinking as well as capture the students work ideas. And also this may give some announcement to the students or some uh, providing some information. These bulletin boards can be used. And next is chat rooms. Chat rooms means we can have chats with the people. So this, this will be used by like a, many uh, uh, apps are available like a Slack, Skype, Google Meet, Zoom. Now we are using Zoom and Moodle Classrooms, Teams, Microsoft Teams and Google Chats. So many are available. Then the CD-RAM is a compact disk read only memory. So if this is a compact disk that can be usually used only for reading purposes. So in 21st century, the educator must have all these kind of required skills. So we need to uh, know how to use different kind of uh, technological uh, advancements. We have to go with that. So I have given this picture, which is explain, self-explaining. Next is about the teaching strategies to engage. Here. So first of all, I would like to talk about use of multimedia. So um, uses of multimedia means uh, here we are using many images, videos, sharing the uh, some instantaneous information. So this will capture the attention of the students usually and uh, giving students ability to classrooms. And also this will allow the students to communicate and actually apply what they learn and enhance overall educator educational experiences. Second thing is about utilization of social media. You know that everybody uh, using the social medias nowadays and they, they were enjoying with the social media usage. So when this social media is used for teaching purposes, definitely it is going to be a great uh, one as well as the students will be more interested to use this. So by using the social media, we can, uh, we can share a lot of uh, ideas and we can collaborate and also we can have uh, social communication. Third is about using variety of resources. So mix things up and add some engagement. So here the source of information is not going to be limited to just books because the books, reading books is nowadays limited. So we are using many things like a podcast, videos, and so many uh, softwares are available. And fourth is making most games and perks of gamification. So gamification is a specific app which we are using currently in many of the uh, colleges, like uh, making the um, learning by the way of conducting games. So students will be more involved in this. And fifth is use of technology to empower the students and reach out. So which means here, the technology will nurture the artistic expression and also this will um, help the students to actively express their opinions and also uh, they can receive a wide wisdom. So these tools usually provide an artistic communication for the students who have uh, constrained by the traditional options of verbal or written communication. So what are the ways to use the technology in the classrooms? So here's some of the things I have mentioned. So you can have a virtual field trip. So by the way, it's not necessary to travel and go and see, and you can see in, the, in your place itself, you can have this visual, uh, visual field trip and uh, you can have uh, quite, you can make quite noisy classrooms and you should, you can use videos for mini lessons. And also you can coordinate with the live videos and you also add multimedia elements to the presentations and use digital exit tickets. Also, you can use a study and critic web content. You can gather the student feedbacks. 
So many things we can do by using the technology in the classrooms. It's just this, but we have we have a lot. We have a lot to do by using the technology in classrooms. So what is the meaning of technology integration? Using of technology to enhance and support the educational environment. And the technology integration in the classroom can also support classroom instructions by creating opportunities for the students to complete assignments on the computer rather than with the normal pencil paper work usually. No? Like here we are using for the for the subject of pharmacology, we will be giving assignment like a drug card, writing drug cards. So usually the students will be writing the drug cards, but nowadays everything is based on the uh, technology. So here are the examples, we can have a digital scavenger hunt. So this is really very, very um, interesting. We used in the clinical setup also, like uh, we will make them to do something like uh, some instruments or equipments. We will be asking them to find out something like that. So this is really a great online experience based on the traditional game and that challenges the players to find specified items or sometimes we will be giving some puzzles to solve them before a lot of time run out. Like uh, we are using um, Kahoot, Kahoot and all. No? So this is, this is a dull example for uh, having the technological integrations in the education. So here, uh, the level of technology integration so actually, you know, the, um, the main characteristics, characteristics are associated with the five uh, levels of technology integration. The first level is entry level. So here the teacher will begins to uh, use this technology tool to deliver the curriculum content to the students. Second is adoption level. Adoption level means here the teacher will direct the students in the conventional and the procedural use of uh, technology tools, then the adaptation level. Adaptation level, the teacher facilitate the students uh, exploration and the independent use of the technology tools. And fourth is infusion level. So here the teacher provides a learning context and the student choose the technology tools. Then fifth is transformation level. So this level, the teacher encourages the innovative use of technology tools as facilitating the higher order thinking and higher order learning activities. And it may not be possible without the use of technology. Then next is about the evolution of learning. So the evolution, so learning is actually a biological adaptation adaptation and it is like any other adaptation it is the outcome of the evolution by natural selection so here um, this will actually you know the learning will start from our birth onwards so but we need to have more interaction while having this learning we need to have more interaction and we have to have more freedom within our environment so many things right so here Using this comparative and uh, perspective to understand ability of organisms to acquire, consolidate, and retrieve the information which is originating in experiences. So what is the history of learning? Actually, the learning history presents uh, the experiences and understanding of participants and the people who initiated and also the, who implemented and participated in organizational transformation in effect or sometimes it, we collaborate the learning experiences as well as non-participants who were affected with these effects, efforts. Now I am going to move with another uh, subtopic is about Swayam. Swayam, actually it's a, a very good um, app we have in our uh, nation. Actually, you know, the expansion or the abbreviation of the Swayam is study webs of active learning for in aspiring minds. Really, I was um, I was very grateful for uh, making this available in our country because you know in American countries and all like in I'm in Saudi Arabia where I am using the American systems mostly. So where we are using like a blackboard for our uh, teaching learning courses. But in India, actually, this swaying is one of the uh, really very good uh, and it's a very uh, massive open online course platform and this is very useful for our e-learning e portal. So this Swayam is a program initiated by the government of India and it is designed to achieve three cardinal principles of education policy. They are access, equity and quality. 
So the objective of this effort is to take the best teaching learning resources to all, including for the most disadvantaged group. This is most important thing here because everybody can use it. So here you can see this is the, uh, the available from our SWAM. I have taken it and I'm showing you. So here uh, there is a course, which is like emerging areas in hospital planning, design, construction, and facilities management. So this is um, course ac actually available. So the starting date mentioned and ending date and exam date, everything is clearly mentioned here and uh, how many credit points this course has and what is the level the students can enroll here. And already in this course, it's already finished. Okay, So this course, uh, 562 students have enrolled in this. This is really amazing. So this is a website you can see, you can uh, register first in the, uh, to go into this website and also you can sign in after that, you can utilize it. The various courses are available from the various uh, aspects. Next, I'm going to talk about uh, the thing is virtual reality. So actually the virtual reality is a computer generated environment with scenes and objects that appear to be real and making the user feel they are immersed in their surroundings. So usually you know, the use of this computer technology to create and uh, stimulate, uh, simulate the environment which can be explored in 360 degree, they can view it. So the environment is perceived through a device which is known as virtual reality headset or helmet. Okay, so you can see here how they are using it by using like a helmet. And that can be connected with either computer or sometimes even our uh, mobile phones. So here I would like to say three things. They have uh, three different types of virtual reality. They are, one is non-immersive. So non-immersive means it's a, uh, it's often overlooked by the virtual reality categories. Like what we are using here, what we are seeing the picture in the system, that is the non-immersive. Okay, so what uh, we are using in our mobile phones, all those things are called as non-immersive virtual, uh, virtual reality. Even in, in the classrooms, what we are using is the smart boards or the projectors, which are, uh, which are the non-immersive. Second is semi-immersive. So semi-immersive means here, this will provide users with the partially virtual environment. It will uh, still give users the perception of being different reality. Uh, when they focus on the digital image. Like here, uh, they can, you can see under the picture uh, in the B, I have shown you that they will get some 3D image. So like, uh, it will be like a partial immersive uh, environment. They can feel it. But they may realize that the way they are, but still they can see it. But in the third thing is very, really very great. This is fully immersive simulations. Even in the in our medical field and the nursing field, we are using it very uh, commonly nowadays because this fully immersive simulations really is a most realistic situation experience which will be giving and it is complete and si with the sight and sounds. And also here we will be going into the same uh, environment like feeling like we are in that place. So I can show you more, uh, more with this fully immersive simulation with the uh, video. Hello, ma'am. I'm Ryan. I'm going to be your nurse today. Hi, my name is Jen. How are things going? She's crying a lot. She's so hmm. irritable. She wants to be hmm. held all the time. Whenever I put her down, she cries. All right. I'm well, sorry to hear that. Um, let me, if it's all right, I'll just take a quick look at the doctor's notes and then do a little physical exam and then we'll talk some more. Okay. All right. Okay. Take a listen with the uh, stethoscope here. Okay. All right. Oh, the heart and lungs sound good. So see here, here are the person who's doing it virtually in the other side. 
so how it is feeling like it's clearly explained here heart rate's a little fast but probably just because she's just a little touching the baby here. and he's feeling like uh, he's right. uh, auscultating the baby okay, well, i'll like her down a little bit um i'm going to check your blood glucose here as well okay, okay. i will move to the next because i don't want to show the full video i think you might have understood how they are using this right next time moving with the advantages of the virtual reality in education so definitely the virtual reality it will increase the memory power because they are feeling like they are doing it like re really it is going to increase their memory power and it's going to have more retention on their knowledge and it is going to boost the excitement and engagement in the classrooms and this will definitely improve the learning outcomes and also this will focus the student attention on the lessons and open up with the new opportunities and create the accessibility for every student there are so many advantages but i have mentioned few here so finally i would like to say here the take home message that technology in education advances throughout our life and try new technology in your teaching explore the technology for the benefits of students learning so don't uh, hesitate that it is new i don't uh, have the experience i don't i'm not expert i'm not it person don't say like that just explore the technology for the benefits of students learning that's that's good for everyone any questions ask me thank you so much Thank you, ma'am. It was really a wonderful session, and the PPT was really taken an effort to prepare it. Uh, really, thank you once again, ma'am. I hope that uh, this session of educational technology was really useful for the participants. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. I'd like to welcome our next speaker, Dr. G. T. George, Professor, Department of Obstetrics and Gynecological Nursing, P. R. S. College of Nursing, Kerala. She'll be dealing with the session on methods of teaching. Session one. Over to you, ma'am. Dr. Jiti George. Ma'am, you can unmute yourself and share your screen and start presenting, ma'am. You can turn your uh, PPT to the full screen. Um, you can start your presentation.
Ma'am, am I audible? Dr. Jiti George, are you facing any network issue? Yes, yes, Dr. Molly John, you can uh, type whatever your query is in the question and answer session. It is right away there in your Zoom itself. You can type your query. Dr. G.T. George, if you're facing any network issue, you can, we can move to the next speaker. Uh, Sushmita, I think uh, some network issue, ma'am, there. Okay, uh, Dr. G.T. George, you can stop sharing your screen. We'll move on to Dr. Bahubali. Yes, sure, ma'am. Even I would have requested the same. Thank you. Yes, yes. Yes, sir. Now it's time to welcome our next speaker of the day, Dr. Bahubali J.G., Associate Professor, Head of the Department Psychiatric Nursing at Bharati Vidyapit deemed to be University College of Nursing, Sangoli Maharashtra, to deliver the session on the next session, like the methods of te teaching session two. Over to you, sir. Uh, yes, thank you, madam. Yes. I think uh, my voice is clear and uh, the screen is visible to all. Yes, sir. Right away, you can proceed your screen, sir. Okay. Is the slideshow is visible? Yes, sir. It is visible, sir. Okay. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, actually, uh, thanks for the uh, introduction and welcoming me for the session, which I would have wanted to deliver it at this time itself. Thank you so much for that. And thank you uh, to SFN, uh, SFNP and uh, BioLeague for organizing such a wonderful and much needed uh, uh, like uh, online platform uh, educational activity, which is again about the methods of teaching. So uh, we, we uh, uh, tend to create the effectiveness in terms of teaching uh, to the students. So uh, it is much needed for all the participants which uh, we have gathered here. And uh, <clears throat> uh, once again, thanks for that, uh, for making this uh, virtual reality. So I bring warm greetings from Bharti Vidyapit, uh, College of Nursing Sangli, Maharashtra. So before I begin to my topic, or uh, the topics, in fact, the teaching methods, uh, which were allotted for me to uh, engage you all and update you about the these uh, methods of teaching. So I would like to start with this slide, which you all might have been seeing there, like uh, whatever we task, uh, whatever we perform a task, uh, we should have certain approach uh, to uh, begin and to carry on and the, uh, to end the task, which we are supposed to so you can see uh, there in the left side of the uh, picture in one uh, in picture left side where all people are engaged into certain activity but uh, the activities are not little uh, organized and the right side which uh, depicts that they are all uh, working with certain uh, intellectual abilities cognitive abilities and uh, they are applying those cognitions into their uh, psychomotor activity and uh, with a proper uh, attitude towards that work accomplishment. So they are working a little more intelligently and smartly, whereas the other left side, which we can see they are uh, uh, like they are messed up and uh, the work is uh, uh, like duplication of work and mismanagement of work, all is happening. So why I'm showing this uh, slide is because uh, we are all teachers and we are all teaching and teaching is our primary task to handle our children and to educate them and to equip them with the necessary skills and the psychomotor abilities to perform a nursing care at clinical setup. So it's very essential for all of us to be organized with our task. So that organization into our mindset of teaching 
and teachers would come i i suppose or i i assume that uh, this fdp would give that opportunity for all uh, all of us as a teachers so i i say that uh, the teaching it means that um, yes stands uh, sorry t stands for supporting e stands for empowering and yeah, and e, again e stands for like engaging then caring then sharing <clears throat> then uh, reflecting and nurturing and assessing so all these char characteristics uh, characteristic behaviors uh, behavior which can be seen in a teacher and that uh, the act or the behavior which the teacher performs is a teaching so every child is unique every student is unique and so is the way we work with them so we have to be innovative we have to be uh, like up to the level of the expectation of those students so uh, i define uh, or I, I describe a teacher in certain way like a teacher can never truly teach unless he is still learning himself as the lamp can never light another lamp unless it continues to burn its own flame so with this quote uh, i begin my uh, topic which is allotted by organizers to me on uh, the objectives of to have an overview of group discussion panel discussion symposium seminar and workshop so if you can see in a previous slide also like i have made a aroma which depicts us that or which directs all of us that these methods are uh, like as they go down and down they become more and more complex and more and more like involvement of uh, expertise which we can say in terms of students uh, who are attendees or the organizers or the chairperson of those activities so group discussion is little bit uh, smaller uh, pattern of uh, activity of teaching then uh, then little more complex uh, complexity which involves is panel discussion and symposium seminar and the workshop so we are going to see overview of these uh, methods of teaching and then our second objective is to know the need of these methods of teaching among nursing professionals and to identify the challenges in today's era of nursing education and ways to overcome those challenges so these are the points which we are going to discuss in today's uh, gathering so uh, to begin with the methods of teaching uh, here the methods of teaching help the teacher to conduct teaching in a certain uh, uh, the teaching should uh, represent with certain characteristic which is agreeable okay which is friendly in nature and which is successful in manner for the student and students need which is by initiating and maintaining link between the subject matter and the student so uh, we have to be focused upon the uh, students needs and students uh, expectations of, about that topic which we are dealing with uh, uh, in terms of teaching so that is what uh, it is a method of teaching which we adopt certain way of uh, or strategy of uh, implementing our uh, or disseminating our information and knowledge which we have to the students or pupil uh, that is nothing but the, the way we adapt is nothing but methods of teaching then uh, if we have to see the the teaching methods which are allotted to me or as part of my presentation these methods demand to have the core knowledge base among the learners as i told you uh, they are simple to complex which i just listed down and even though all those five methods which need certain knowledge base among the learners it is it can't be like you know the learner can't come to the classroom and sit empty mind and learn the abcs of the basics there and then itself by utilizing especially these five uh, methods of teaching so the student has to have certain base, basic knowledge or uh, the prerequisite knowledge related to the topic which they are learning through these methods of uh, teaching that is uh, group discussion panel discussion symposium seminar and workshop so uh, why these uh, basic wh what these uh, basic knowledge is going to lead them to uh, and sharpen their affective psychomotor skills so the cognitive skills or cognitive abilities which they possess with themselves that is going to help them to excel towards the affectiveness or developing proper attitude and developing certain motor skills which are necessary to perform that particular task which they are learning in the classroom and also to meet the higher levels of bloom's taxonomy so as the bloom's taxonomy goes higher and higher it, it focuses more upon the affective and psychomotor domain along with the cognitive aspects of any learning 
So uh, these methods are uh, required to have basic knowledge and uh, they will enhance their ability to uh, perform certain tasks in a proper attitude. Then these teaching methods or strategies promote the higher level of thinking. Obviously, uh, these teaching methods, uh, which may lead to think out of box, think creatively, think critically, and develop certain learning, self-learning ability. So here, by utilizing these methods, uh, we are going to create uh, learners to become a, a future scientist or future uh, leaders of the education and their own professional life. <clears throat> then these methods have been uh, proved to be very effective in resolving the intellectual conflicts within the profession, which are unresolved and overcoming with the uh, different angles of problems in hand. So these methods are ultimately going to help us to excel in our profession and resolve many conflicts and many issues which are burning issues in our profession can be resolved by adopting one or more of these methods of teaching and we can encourage the students to adopt such behavior. So there are certain prerequisites which mandatory to have uh, by the uh, organizer and the organizer and the learner that the prerequisites include, as I told you, the basic knowledge, which is essential, okay, and then the proper preparation, which is at paramount, and uh, rigorous rehearsal before implementation of any of these methods has to be there by the planners and organizers to make the teaching methods more and more uh, useful and effective for the beneficiaries. Then knowledge, expertise, and maturity level of the leaders of the organizing of these teaching methods has to be there. The people who involved into these uh, methods of teaching or learning, they have, they have to possess a certain level of maturity in terms of their uh, knowledge level or their expertise or experience level. They have to have little bit of seriousness in learning these methods or uh, learning through these methods. And they have to have full understanding of the theme which is had, which is uh, going to be explored, analyzed, or evaluated during the teaching methods. Okay, then uh, level of cognitive domain of the attendees is at paramount, as I told you earlier. Then sitting arrangement and hand hands-on training facilities, if needed, has to be offered or kept ready for the dissemination of or, uh, or to make these methods of teaching more and more effective and stronger enough to capture by the learners. <clears throat> so uh, here we are going to see the first uh, uh, method of uh, teaching that is uh, group discussion. So here um, this group discussion is a strategy or the method of teaching Okay, which, which is uh, uh, like organized and planned discussion. Okay, here the discussion is nothing but interchange of ideas between student and teacher or a group of students. Okay, in a, uh, resulting into active learning or the realization of the set goals or the objectives before beginning of group discussion. <clears throat> So purpose of uh, discussion as a uh, method of teaching, that purpose includes uh, to teach the pupil or students which is relevant to their context or situation which is demanding, okay, as if, uh, for example, uh, like having some discussion on topic uh, which they are going to be prepared for their examination, okay, such as like it is a context specific where in which the students also are encouraged or interested to participate into the discussion. Then uh, to assist group to develop, express, and validate their opinions and beliefs. So because uh, if we have to see the technique of implementation of this uh, discussion method, uh, there in which uh, what happens is uh, the every student or every participant of that group discussion gets an opportunity to ventilate their opinions and beliefs or ideas which they have in their mind regarding the topic which they are discussing or which is under discussion. And to develop that opinion, beliefs or uh, ideas, the student has to learn, uh, understand, read, self-learning uh, has to happen. And then the group discussion can be more effective from the side of the student or the group member. And uh, to share and illustrate information and concepts, Okay, and to foster democratic values, this is a very important part. Uh, I, I just want to remind you that all these five methods which are allotted to me are a bit of like, you know, 
uh, democratic in nature of uh, teaching and learning. If you have to see the contrary methods of teaching, like uh, you will be seeing it later sessions, which are a little bit of autocratic in nature. But most of the time, what teaching methods which I am going to deal with you all are in democratic in nature. So it helps because, you know, the freedom of uh, expression is there. Freedom of uh, expression of beliefs, opinions is there in this uh, method of teaching. So it is it helps the students to inculcate the democratic values within oneself. And it makes the person to express at any point of time where the problem which is arising in, uh, in their life or the professional life. Then to develop team building and social skills, because, you know, it teaches group discussion also uh, achieves certain purpose that is uh, uh, meeting of social uh, development or uh, inheriting the or acquainting with the social skills which are necessary for the students. And it helps to build the sense of uh, unity among the group members because they are, they are possessing with a certain typical type of uh, topic which they are discussing so that uh, cohesion or the unity can be witnessed within the group. Then development of right attitudes, okay, that uh, be, uh, helps the students to look at that point of uh, topic which they are under discussion that makes them uh, to understand its pros and cons and evaluate the right ways and wrong ways and develop the required attitude or the right attitude towards that uh, problem which they are discussing under uh, teaching method. Then to develop problem solving skills, of course. Uh, the group are meeting for the discussion uh, with certain problem or certain challenge and that uh, this group discussion would help them to encourage the problem solving skills. So uh, maybe they are using for this particular topic which is given in hand, you know, like uh, the, for suppose like group discussion can be upon, uh, you know, like uh, <clears throat> uh, problem solving methods like, you know, uh, medication errors at uh, clinical setup okay or in the hospital how the medication errors can be prevented so uh, that discussion uh, would help those uh, this, uh, members who are in the discussion to acquire those attitudes or those knowledge or those uh, psychomotor skills within them so that any further or any future out of this discussion uh, any other uh, problems they encounter they get the instant strategy to overcome that problem so it helps naturally it helps to solve the problems or uh, to develop the skills related to problem solving and it arouses the students interest because you know it is an active process of uh, teaching method where in which the pupil or the learner is also part of it and uh, he has to sustain with his interest which is at the beginning it has to be sustained throughout the discussion so it is active participation of students which makes the students to remain aroused so there are certain themes or the topics uh, which can be discussed through this method of uh, teaching that is con certain controversial issues, ethical issues and legal issues, okay, like uh, professional status of nurses, nursing or image of nurse, okay, these can be discussed and uh, strategies can be developed to improvise the negative uh, part of that, that discussion which comes out with and the promotion of positive aspects has to be, a strategy has to be planned for promoting the positive aspect also. Like, you know, so certain ethical controversial issues can be incorporated into this discussion. So uh, mainly uh, there are certain recent challenges, okay. Now, now you might have come across with certain discussions uh, uh, which we had during the COVID time you know, like uh, how to resolve or how to plan or how to overcome because the COVID-19 pandemic was all of a sudden, which was new to everybody. That pandemic was uh, unprecedented for everybody. And then uh, not only the materialistic shortage, but the uh, skill shortage also was uh, witnessed. And even though the nurses are present, but they are incapable of dealing with such things. So the uh, rigorous roundtable uh, discussions were held and uh, the challenges of uh, caring with the patient were uh, daily uh, discussed among the team. And then the, that kind of uh, challenges can be sorted out for effective nursing care. Then uh, there are certain other uh, uh, issues also can be taken into discussion, which are just remember the theme of the theme of the discussion has to be chosen very carefully, which should be opt for the discussion. Okay, the main headlines of the or main gist of the themes can be controversial issues ethical issues or dilemmas or legal dilemmas which are involved into one's own profession can be taken as the topic for the discussion. Then there are uh, like grossly, if you have to see, 
there are uh, two types of discussion that is close group and public group so close group uh, which is with the friends with the classmates or study groups staff meeting workshop or round table okay these are all uh, close group discussion and public uh, group discussion which includes several attendees or uh, maximizing the number of attendees or beneficiaries in terms of panel discussion symposium conferences and seminar so the uh, here very important aspect of the discussion is uh, preparation for the discussion okay uh, which includes three stages mainly orientation engagement and debriefing orientation includes the participants of discussion method has to be oriented has to be encouraged uh, to read and self uh, learn the pros and cons or the all the details of that topic and they are, should come with preparation so encouragement to their uh, uh, orientation to the topic orientation to the materials which they need to refer all that has to be oriented to the uh, discussion members and then engagement has to be conducted wherein where which the each member in the group discussion would take active participation and express their viewpoint or their ideas related to that topic which is under discussion and then at the end uh, the chairperson of or the um, supervisor of that group discussion can debrief the group members okay about uh, the conclusion or the uh, take home messages out of that discussion and how the discussion can be further extended with the sub other topics there are certain advantages uh, associated with this method of uh, teaching okay that is as we discussed in the purposes as well this is student centered method which develops uh, recalling and retention ability as they prepare and come uh, for the discussion so it helps to develop uh, the self esteem because their sense of ideas and the expressions are re well recognized by the group so it develops a sense of uh, self satisfaction and which in turn help to elevate their self esteem and then uh, develop problem solving skills as i told you the narration of what uh, problem solving skills or how those are inculcated by this method then critical thinking ability can be enhanced because the unseen part of the problem can also be explored during the discussion then the self confidence is increased team building is increased social skills proper attitude is developed okay then comprehensive knowledge is gathered by one individual upon discussion in the group then uh, they uh, the first uh, the this method can foster the democratic way of thinking because there is a freedom for thinking also when there is autocratic nature which is uh, expressed upon us we limit ourselves to think so but this method of uh, teaching uh, that is discussion which allows the students to explore their thinking by uh, expressing them in the group discussion so as uh, uh, the advantage goes there is also disadvantage of this method that is time consuming in nature because the certain period of amount of time has to be allocated for self learning or orientation and then the preparation has to start and that preparation which should lead to the rehearsals and that if it is all together what i mean to say is time consuming in nature then the success of discussion depends mainly on the uh, preparation of the students because you know if the students are not well prepared then it becomes a flop show for the uh, learning method so it oh, entire uh, method of teaching that is discussion method of teaching gets collapsed then uh, ill preparation which leads to nothing good can be achieved out of the discussion then because uh, the the time can be killed by uh, cracking uh, some nonsense uh, discussion okay then less efficient method for larger group as smaller the group effective is the method of uh, teaching okay so the larger group it can be applied then control is not in the uh, group then discussion may take to the uh, passiveness or inattentiveness can be seen among the participants second method is panel discussion here this is little upgraded version of the discussion okay in discussion there are no audiences but the uh, audiences itself participate into the teaching method but in panel discussion it is little bit uh, similar to that but the difference is here the members who are discussing with a, a particular topic or the problem in hand can be seen uh, discussing upon the stage and expressing their own view about that particular aspect of that uh, theme of the panel discussion and rest of the audience will be observing and later on they are allowed to ask the questions 
So this was used initially in the year 1928 uh, by Harry uh, Weir, who, who used this method uh, to discuss in front of the small group. And then it was uh, carried out by many others. And uh, this uh, came out as a standalone teaching method, which is planned discussion or panel discussion. So uh, here what happens is around four to eight qualified persons. Qualified is the very highlighting term here, which you, we all must note that the panelists who are called as qualified personnel who should uh, uh, be possessing the adequate or enough amount of uh, knowledge and exp experience related to that topic which under panel discussion. So they sit uh, and uh, four to eight uh, qualified personnel sit and discuss the topic in front of large group or the audience. Okay, the purposes includes benefits for the future, uh, benefits for the future, then uh, different points of views are presented by each panelist then uh, stimulates thought and discussion, and then quick exchange of facts can be carried out uh, during the panel discussion. Then there are types of panel discussion. One is uh, public panel discussion, which we all uh, very commonly observe into television shows or new channels, radios, okay, or panel, uh, like even in the FM radios. Uh, the topic can be anything which may be may not be always associated with the political enough, but it can be with a, any other uh, social aspect which can be discussed under public panel discussion. Okay, it is arranged uh, entirely for the common problems. Okay, and to provide the factual information and determine the social values. So altogether, this panel discussion is uh, called as public panel discussion. Then uh, ultimately, what we are focusing is educational panel discussion, which is uh, used in the educational institutions to provide the factual and conceptual knowledge and clarification of certain subject matter, which is unaware or which is no wise or which is uncovered area of learning uh, by the beneficiaries or the students. So such topics are explored in front of the audience, that is students, and then they are benefited with the information which has been evident recently through research or through certain uh, publications. Okay, so uh, ideally the, uh, what uh, the picture I have tried to depict here is uh, to pro project you all with the uh, fashion or the arrangements of the panel discussion, which takes place like in uh, the middle person who sits is a moderator who moderates the session of panel through the panelists. And there is a one instructor who will be instructing when to start, when to stop, what things to be done in front of the audience. And uh, back of him, there'll be all the audience which we are there uh, witnessing the panel discussion. Then advantages, which encourages the social learning, which helps to have uh, achieve the higher objectives that is like uh, psychomotor and uh, affective objectives can be achieved through this uh, panel discussion. Then develop ability of problem solving and logical thinking, and it develops interest and right type of attitude towards certain issues or the topics which are discussed. Then disadvantages, uh, the deviation from theme uh, can occur at a time, okay? If the uh, panel discussion is not appropriately uh, handled, uh, deviation from the theme can occur. Then domination by the specific panelists can occur or as a vice versa. Means any one individual who is very strong at the discussion, he may dominate the session and others may be passive in nature. So that can be a disadvantage. And again, it's a time consuming because arranging all the panelists and uh, uh, remind you that uh, the panelists uh, which must be preferably from the own institution or they are aware, like panelists are aware to the all the audience. Such panelists has to be chosen and the meticulous uh, choice has to be done so that they can justify their role in the panel discussion. So all that time consuming process which takes a toll on teaching learning process in the curriculum. Then it's a vague and superficial discussion, okay, due to lack of preparation. If there is a lack of preparation, it is not going to lead anywhere. So we are just uh, beating around the bush and we are not leading anywhere. Uh, to the conclusion. There may, there may be splitting of ideas and opinions which may occur among the panelists and moderator uh, tries to resolve that, but in case if it is not possible, then uh, the audience are also uh, going to be confused with the split of ideas. Then uh, the third one, which is workshop method, which includes, uh, as you all can see here, certain task is given to the uh, subgroups of the workshop. Okay, and they are working hard upon to resolve the problems which are posed 
to each subgroup differently. So usually when we think about uh, typically uh, when we think about a workshop, which we may see certain instruments and certain uh, spares or certain uh, equipments which are used to dismantle and uh, reassemble the machineries, all that comes into our mind when we think about workshop or certain manpower which they are applying their uh, uh, energy into shaping something and designing some uh, output or uh, like that. But uh, educational setting, the workshop is nothing but it's a brainstorming session. Okay, workshop which helps or which triggers the thoughts of the participants as well as the organizers to come out with certain uh, novel ways of overcoming certain difficulties or challenges. Okay, so sir, such topics can be chosen meticulously in order to decide uh, or to create the effective uh, method of teaching by workshop. So according to L. Ramachandran, uh, the workshop can be defined as a meeting of people to work together in a small group. Remind you that it's a small group gathering upon problems which are of concern to their profession and relevant to their professional activity and to find the suitable solutions uh, related to that problem. So here, a small number of or group of people who come together to, uh, to learn uh, and to overcome the certain concerns and problems of their profession and uh, they can disseminate or generalize those uh, strategies which are uh, uh, emerging as output during the workshop can be disseminated through publications and through awareness to other professional fellow members. Then there are certain principles to be observed during the workshop that is uh, uh, workshop should focus on current issues in the profession to be discussed. It can't be, workshop can't be kept on uh, the procedures or very basic procedures of nurses, okay? Uh, it has to go in a higher level of thinking, which are emerging trends in the medical profession. Such uh, uh, topics or burning issues or challenges can be taken up during the workshop, okay? Then uh, uh, the, there are certain activities has to be planned for all the participants, okay? So that they remain active during the workshop. Okay, and uh, that may create a more effectiveness. So active participation role has to be given to each participants. Then every individual has their own work and has contribution to make towards workshop. Then uh, scenarios for uh, workshop in nursing profession, like identifying the thirst area of research, okay, or developing or modifying the nursing procedures, new format of lesson plan in nursing education, preparing the instruction module, developing curriculum or modifying curriculum at institution level, uh, then identifying the deficient areas in a single education. <clears throat> so these uh, uh, topics can be undertaken in nursing profession to establish a workshop and there are plenty enough. As we think of uh, now after pandemic, there are many issues which are emerging, uh, which can be uh, implemented or which can be uh, disseminated to the learners through these higher level of teaching and one among that best way among that is workshop. Then uh, essential features of workshop which includes like complete and active involvement by everybody participant may have to work as a reporter and leader as well because they have to come forward and present their subgroup activities so all that way they are reporters and leaders. Then there are certain objectives has to be set, okay, uh, such as like cognitive, psychomotor and affective objectives, which may enhance the ability of a, a learner to develop their cognition, means develop their sense of knowledge and awareness about the issue. And then psychomotor uh, objectives are set for developing certain skills and the fine motor movements, which can be developed in during the workshop and affective like uh, helps to develop the attitude among the professionals, like instead of hating, after the end of the workshop, they should start liking it to do such activity which was under discussed under workshop or carried out under workshop. Then there are advantages, okay, and uh, here the main advantage is to realize the higher cognitive and psychomotor objectives by hands-on training. Okay, then develop understanding of proficiency, then develop Im and improve the professional efficiency in nursing and other uh, uh, like allied uh, medical sciences, then develop teaching proficiencies for nursing in in service teachers, because you know, like there are certain new strategies which are emerging out of the need of the hour and then the teachers are not equipped. 
and even you know what we learned uh, uh, 15 years back that we cannot imitate the same thing right now because the demands have changed the trends have changed so we need to acquire adapt certain things like you know the previous the publication was not much uh, uh, scientific in nature but now if you expect or if you see there are a lot of workshops which are conducted to make us aware about what is scopus how to identify the genuine journal in the scopus all that way so there are a lot of uh, as the time changes the need of workshop is higher and higher okay <clears throat> Limitations like uh, it mainly I would like to highlight here as a limitation is uh, the effectiveness of workshop technique has to be assessed by follow. But this is always or most of the time or majority of the time which is lacking. So workshops find your talent, enhance your skills, help others. That is the motto of workshops. The next is seminar and symposium. This is little larger uh, version of uh, panel discussion i would say but the nature of implementation of this method of teaching is little different here uh, i can just uh, highlight you what is seminar and what is symposium and i can directly go to the differences between seminar and symposium so that you will understand the phenomena <clears throat> seminar is an instructional technique of higher learning which involves paper reading on theme and uh, the followed by group discussion to clarify the complex aspects of theme but in symposium it's a method of group discussion like a panel discussion okay uh, in which two or more person under the direction of a chairman present separate speeches uh, with their own view upon one point of discussion so here different views are presented in symposium upon one aspect in seminar uh, the one aspect is taken and it is broken down into several parts and the several members uh, expert members or resource persons can deliver their lecture or reading upon uh, in front of large audience so again the same kind of objectives uh, can be set forth and then the mainly uh, if we have to understand the difference between seminar and symposium uh, in seminar topics are related to the recent trends and developments in nursing whereas in symposium uh, controversial issues in nursing can be taken up as a symposium topic then multiple aspects of topic under consideration in the discussion of uh, during the seminar then a uh, single aspect is taken up into symposium then chairperson has to be uh, expert and uh, he has to exert has to exert less control and here in symposium the chairperson has more control has to have more control then this is uh, less time for discussion and here in symposium more time for discussion uh, is involved for the participants then comparatively less preparation from the side of participants required in seminar whereas in symposium demands more preparation from the side of participants they have to prepare in order to pose the questions pertaining uh, to the topic under discussion as uh, you may see uh, the press conferences and all okay there are like you know one or multiple people who sit in front of the reporters and the reporters are giving a question which is thought based which is uh, well prepared in order to exp explore the uh, happenings uh, with the experts who are sitting in front to answer that is kind of symposium then there are advantages disadvantages and uh, limitations associated with this seminar and symposium okay then uh, uh, it plays a very important role in nursing because our nursing profession is based upon sharing of uh, ideas or new uh, identifying the new areas of uh, task and then exploring and disseminating to the other uh, fellow nurses and ensuring the uniformity in our services so in terms of that seminar and symposium play a very important role in order to uplift our professional uh, abilities and professional skills then uh, as far as uh, needs uh, need for uh, uh, need for higher teaching methods in nursing education is concerned uh, which we discuss uh, some part of it uh, in the from the beginning but actually usually you know what i feel like uh, the needs for these higher teaching methods in nursing education is high and high as i i quoted one where like in a workshop as time changes or trends change we have to have or we have to go with a higher level of uh, method of teaching to equip ourselves with those new phenomena so uh, there are several enormous needs which are felt in order to apply these higher teaching methods which i would list some of them are like 
students are so inquisitive in advance uh, uh, and today's students are very advanced learners so they get bored easily they feel stereotyped with a traditional method of teaching so in order to do that or to uh, keep away the boredom and the stereotyped uh, uh, outlook towards these traditional methods these higher teaching methods would enhance our active participation makes them to learn more effectively then information and knowledge in the medical science is ever changing dynamic in nature so i i, I suppose i believe that every 3 years our uh, medical field changes uh, are coming to in front of us in order to acquire ourselves with the needed changes so uh, medical science uh, changes in medical science uh, can put forth or challenges for adoption of these higher teaching methods then uh, researchers focusing on uh, research is focusing on teaching and learning process are increasing day by day and they are focused much upon comparison of uh, the different teaching methods one upon another and then they are coming out with certain hybrid method of teaching methods as well so all that has to be uh, learned and adopted by all our teachers and the higher level of learners so that uh, these uh, higher teaching methods can be useful in such scenarios then you know like uh, governmental education policy is changing day by day okay there are new and new uh, policies which are strategies which are put forth okay and then our apex bodies are demanding uh, certain changes every now and then now uh, if we see indian nursing council is emphasizing on skill based training all that way okay so all that uh, demands are putting for need of these higher teaching methods and uh, uh, so uh, there are certain associated challenges and uh, which may help us uh, to overcome that is uh, you know like uh, subject uh, when we are organizing such teaching methods into our uh, curriculum uh, there are certain challenges okay subject matter what we have to opt for which method of teaching we may land up into certain chaos or uh, uh, some confusion then group knowledge groups knowledge is not basic knowledge is not stronger then this uh, that becomes a challenge for organizing such higher method of learning then uh, learning objectives are very uh, high expectation having very high expectation where the students are not able to reach then availability of time in given academic year is very constrained so we can't go on arranging the these higher level of methods of teaching for the students as academic year or academic teachers then group size certain uh, higher level methods demand less uh, number of group size so again it's a challenging okay so uh, as well as uh, you know the kind of participation desired okay here the uh, things which we are lacking is you know uh, fit for higher learning only it can't be applied to enm gnm uh, all the way so it has to be uh, encashed by masters and higher scholars only matured and balanced minded teachers uh, can make, make this method successful as it is a golden stone where the teacher has to be uh, equipped himself or herself in such a way that they are confident enough to execute these higher methods of teaching then the teacher must be resourceful because uh, resourceful in nature because this is a challenge as because uh, today's uh, uh, nursing education and field if you see many are uh, not properly equipped or uh, we even tend to discuss among our colleagues like nursing education or nurses of today are not like olden days so all that way then uh, that puts us as a challenge in front of us to be a resourceful teacher so teachers are becoming narrowing with their resources as the technology is increasing i would uh, criticize this in this way then difficulty in time management equipment availability then type of uh, rooms and facilities cost or the budget of these each methods is higher than the amount which is taking or than the time which is consumed for executing this uh, method of teaching okay <clears throat> so there are there is one research study uh, conducted at university of eldoret kenya which is uh, giving out certain uh, excuse me sir Yes, uh, sir. Can you uh, just uh, okay? It is uh, that's been. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. I'm end of. I'm end of it. Okay, yes. sir. Okay. So these these are the references uh, which I had referred for organizing this content, and uh, uh, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to express myself upon these methods of teaching. Any questions uh, are welcome to discuss. Thank you. Thank you, sir.
that was really a wonderful session uh, can we go back to dr jitty are you ready uh, hi ma'am uh, am i audible now now yes you are audible you can share your screen from oh. your side uh, okay ma'am i think sharin madam will share the screen because i have a network issue i think okay ma'am okay just give enable editing ma'am okay uh uh yes, hello ma'am uh, hi good morning uh, the session for around 20 to 25 minutes uh, kindly keep oh. up the timing ma'am so that we can move with the other presentations thank you ma'am okay okay fine okay okay, okay fine, thank ma'am. you right with you uh, good afternoon to ah uh, good okay good afternoon to all myself jt george uh, associate uh, professor prs college of nursing uh, i am moving to the uh, traditional methods of teaching that's uh, the basic methods but we are going to use for the teaching that i'm going to dealt with uh, so the methods of teaching the teaching is an essential part of education so special function is important uh, import knowledge developing under, developing understanding and skills uh, so teaching is a form of interpersonal influence aims at changing the behavior pattern of other persons so we can able to change the uh, behavior with the help of the teaching and learning activities so uh, the teaching methods refers to orderly logical course of action to accomplish a particular educational goal so the principles of methods of teaching includes uh, suits the teacher personal personally and cap, uh, capitalize on her uh, special asset and should accord with the sound psychological principles and should be adopted in the capacity of the student and methods can be creatively on the content of the course when we are planning for the methods of teaching which method is opt for opt for the or which will be suitable for the student that should be uh, uh, adopted whenever we are going to the uh, teaching methods so the methods of teaching uh, in that uh, there are three mainly three methods that we are going to do in the teaching styles that uh, first is the, the telling method doing method and showing method and uh, the information that should be communicated from uh, the learner to the teacher that is uh, uh, comes under this uh, student centered and teacher centered approach so the direct instructions that will be given to the teacher centered approach that will be formal authority expert personal mod uh, and inquiry inquiry based learning that is facilitator personal model and delegator Co cooperative learning facilitator and delegator so the teacher teacher and uh, teacher centered approaches and student centered approach the information will be passing from the teacher to the students the type of teaching methods is teacher centered student centered and high tech and low tech nowadays we are going to use the high tech and low tech uh, technologies on a technology based education system it's more focused for the uh teaching and learning activities for getting better understanding and better uh, effectiveness of the studies so learning pyramid in that there are the teaching will be comes to the both the uh, passive teaching method as well as the participatory teaching method in the passive teaching method the lecture will be gives 5 percentage and reading will be gives 10 percentage audio visual will be give 20 percentage and demonstration will give 30 percentage other than and the passive teaching methods participatory teaching method is more effective and uh, in this group discussion 50 percentage and practice by doing it will be 75 percentage the students getting more involved in the participatory teaching methods so that is very uh, helpful for the students for the learning uh, aspects the next creative teaching includes uh, so it will be in, in, it will be implicated the creative thinking of the people, students that will be uh by written and reading physical activities by technology and animation sound diagram and color and constructivity so their creative thinking will be includes nowadays the methods of teaching will be more effective and more useful for the uh, students and their approaches of students for getting better result so the common teaching styles that is uh, lecture style coach style, style activity style and group style and blended style uh, the uh, authority that is lecture style that is the teacher centered approach where the teachers are giving the presentations lectures in a one way method 
and the demonstration it will be more involved in the student activity also uh, then the facilitator uh, it promote the self learning and self like actualization and critical thinking skills of the students a uh, delegator or group style best lab activities so the workshops or the laboratory methods or demonstration methods they are commonly involved in the uh, student uh, and they are getting more active in this uh, delegator or a group style and hybrid or blended style the blended the teacher personality and interest of the student is needed if the students is not get much more interested so that method will not be suitable for that much effective for the teaching styles the qualities of a teacher this is the some of the basic qualities that we have to be uh, achieved whenever we are going to opt any of the methods of learning that is genuine care about us listen, listen to our problems want to succeed funny and understanding sense of humor and then learning fun and about still good teacher and the students want to make the students to want to learn and more attractive and more uh, uh, use specific talents to getting interest of the teaching styles the method of instruction the instruction method has been uh, either it will be a demonstration or it will be explaining method or it will be learning by teachers teaching or collaborative method so these are the some of the instruction method that we have to be opt for getting the uh, or giving instructions to the uh, students the methods of teaching which i have to be dealt with that is lecture method demonstration lecture come demonstration method discussion method and laboratory method these are the some of the traditional methods that we are going to use nowadays but if the trend is changed and nowadays more uh, technological more advanced trends we are going to use for the uh, educational uh, levels or educational strategies but this is a common and traditional method that we are going to use in the methods of teaching first we can move on for the lecture method lecture it means lecture delivers a concept and it delivers lots of information in a short amount of time and conveys information that is difficult to present in an another way so it is actually uh, the bigger topics that we can able to take it in a short period of time that the amount of time is very important for taking the uh, lecturing so that's why it's very effective uh, for conveying the information so in the lecture method giving informations and then generating the understanding and creating the interesting of the uh, students so when the lecture method we have to be gather some informations which will be giving or which will be communicating to the students and we have to be generating the understanding about the student matters the purpose of lecture method lecture is effective method for communicating theories ideas facts to the students the basic purpose of lecture is the dissemination of information when we are communicating the informations in a short period of time the lecture method will be very helpful uh, for uh, for the classroom teaching method the purpose is developing problem solving the solutions of the problems or the problems can be solved by the help of this lecture method within a short period of time and correlating with the subject matters correlating with other subjects so we can able to communicate the informations with the, with giving some suitable examples and stimulate thinking critical thinking we can able to understand we can able to motivate to the students and achieve higher uh, cognition cognitive activities we can able to uh, improve and triangulate the habits of learning and listening both the learning and listening habit we can able to get it from the lecturing method so the teacher when we are planning for the uh, lecturing we should have to be prepare for some uh, questions or we have to be have some questions regarding that which including who is our audience what is the purpose of why we are going to giving this topic and how much time time duration for the taking the lecturing and what is the subject matter that we are going to deal with of this we have to be uh, prepared before starting with the lecturing so the components uh, before uh, within the lecturing we have to be introduced we have to have a body of the content and we have to be conclude that way we have to be arrange the lectures preparation of the lectures the first one introduction part we have to be introduce ourselves this is the first session where we have to be introduced we have to meet the students or we have to meet meet the learner for the first time so introduce ourselves by explaining my name or whatever it is it should be in a, a nice way and they have to get an impression within this uh, uh, first section it will be lasting for only 3 to 5 minutes and capture students attention and stimulate their interest so the introduction part it will be giving more interest to the 
uh, or the students uh, whichever they are going to more attractive or more uh, interested to the particular topic the body of lecturing it will be in an organized way like a definition purpose uh, the content should be in an organized manner uh, the amount of time should be allotted that is 20 to 30 minutes and question answer technique to may, may, to be make in the students for be at, attentive in the class and maximum of teaching make the students to understand with the examples and situations so correlate with the examples will be helpful for uh, while lecturing the class and the assess the students pre assisting knowledge when we are taking the classes uh, they should be simple and announced topic the teacher should be rela related to the students goal and interest and should clarify the objectives and purpose of the content and student participation by asking questions uh, to the students uh, maintaining the interest of the teachers to disclose like uh, based upon this some story situations or pictures correlate with the pictures and the last is conclusion while helping uh, while uh, help to summarize the content we have to get the feedback from the students uh, how the topic will be that uh, and we have to get the interest of the students by getting conclusion of this subject matter so this is the activities that we are going to do whenever we are preparing for the uh, uh, lecturing class that is introduction it will be last for four minutes overview of the objectives that is four minutes lecturing should be explained the concepts that is 15 minutes and uh, uh, assess and deepen understanding of the study matter that is five minutes and develop concept which will be includes 15 minutes and the summarizes the topic that is about five minutes. That is the activity that we are going to do in the lecturing method. So whenever we are going to take a lecture, uh, uh, the well, or the lectures or the qualities of a, a teacher is very important, uh, like uh, the appearance of the uh, person and the manners that uh, they are using for uh, taking the lectures, the always uh, gestures and vocabulary will be affecting to the class or they have to be uh, more uh, vocabulary and gestures should be followed whenever they are taking the classes. And the body of talk, the short sentences and simple language while taking the lecturing that will be taking, uh, getting the interest or attraction towards the students, uh, developing supporting information for, uh, for each main ideas. Uh, we have to be interrelated with the subject matter and frame the different types of questions to learn to increase the level of participation. So that will be increases the critical thinking and thinking abilities of the student to prepare and arrange use various types of audio visual aids for getting attractive to their or interested towards the class. Then the technique which we are using is voluntary dissemination of information, voice generation and voice quality, rapport, gesture, eye contact, Hello. Next slide, please. So organizing the lecture, uh, the, we have to have an objective, introduction, body, and conclusions. In that, uh, we have to be included the uh, question answer patterns and the uh, examples for discussions or demonstration should be illustrated while we are organizing the lectures for getting more understanding and more interesting to the uh, participants. Delivering the lecture. So when we, when we are delivering the lectures, we have to control our anxiety. That is effective control mechanism is imaging and spontaneity. Avoid reading to the class. Do not write lectures in full sentences. Rehearse the, deliver, uh, rehearse the delivery at home. We have to prepare whenever we are going to move on for the lecturing method. Good lecture must take, uh, take care of time available, the audience, subject matter, posture, and use of audiovisual aids for getting better effectiveness of the lecturing classes. So these are some of the advantages that uh, for the lecturing classes, it's economical method. The knowledge can be imparted to the students quickly. This method can develop on styles and teaching expos exposition simple task of the teacher and domains lessons for 70 to 85 percentage lessons time more time 
within short period of time, we can able to cover the more, more major portions. That's the other advantages that we had able to see in the lecture method. There are some disadvantages that we can see. That is, it's the student participation is negligible and the method of knowledge is imparted so rapidly. Uh, so within short period of time, more information should be communicated with the students. That's some disadvantages. And it's an uh, undemocratic and authoritarian method of the student cannot challenge us or questions with the ver verdict of the teacher. So next we can move for the demonstration method. The demonstration is a method of teaching by exhibition and explanation combined to illustrate the procedures or experiments. It's directly by the visual method that we have to be uh, impart information to the procedures or experiments. Demonstration method that is verbal explanation plus use of apparatus or live display that including the demonstration method that is both the verbal and live displays will be included in that. The aims of demonstration to teach skills, concepts, or principles to demonstrate dedicated work involving careful manipulation and achieve psychomotor and cognitive objectives. This is some uh, importance that we have to be, or the purpose that we have to be focused on the demonstration method. So the characteristics, understandable. Pre-preparation is required for uh, doing the demonstration. Equipment must be, must be pre-tested and assembled. Priorly, we have to be assembled the all the equipments and it should be in a working condition also. And advanced knowledge setting should be in true to life and opportunity to practice. So demonstration performance method in that model it will be uh, shows that explanation is required in this demonstration that we have to be uh, take out the apparatus and we have to be ready with the apparatus in a working condition. Student performance while doing their, they are re-demonstrating the things they have to be have their performance also important and instruction supervision will be there and evaluation will be there. So it will be a teacher and student standard approach we can see in the demonstration method. So when successful demonstration, the objectives for the teacher abilities of the learner should be developed, proper tool, equipment and material is required, prepare the learner, teach them, in, uh, teach them the job, try them out and follow up them. So do's for the demonstration, prepare beforehand. Before uh, doing the demonstration, we have to be prepared and place the piece of equipment in high enough for the, everybody to observe. Everybody has to be have, uh, have visualized the particular equipment which is displayed. Stress on main ideas, the main important points should be important steps should be explained. So proceed smoothly without interruptions and do not drag demonstration. Effective demonstration steps, including introduction, development, integration, rehearsal, and evaluation that is stimulus, assimilative, and application steps. Three steps will be there. The process of outline for giving the demonstration, orient the learner to the demonstration, showing learners, if possible, what demonstration procedure to be achieved, uh, show and describe the equipments and material to be used so that they can be uh, familiar with the equipment, empathize uh, safety, give demonstrations, and summarize the demonstrations as needed. So additional tips, when we are going to move on for the demonstrations, we should be, uh, it should not be not more than 15 minutes. The presenter should be aware of act activities of each member of workshop or class. The learner work individual presenter should move quickly from one learner to another learner because, because the time should be uh, consumed in that. The number of learners are having difficulties in learning skills. Demonstration should be repeated. The learner who have mastered the skill may be assisted. So there we can able to assess the skill of the skill with the help of this demonstration. So the limitations, demonstration technique, all, uh, although uh, quite effective for small children have the following limitations. So for a small children, we cannot able to, but in our profession and all, we can able to use the uh, uh, demonstration method. It will be helpful for the students for developing the skill. Visibility is always a problem. Within a large group, we cannot able to do the demonstrations. There are no opportunities for the people to participating during the demonstration. After the demonstration, they have to be show it again. So for remembrance of that uh, demonstration, it's uh, difficult for the students. Uh, much scientific information can be grasped during this uh, uh, demonstration method. Next. 
Next, we can move on for the lecture come demonstration method. It is a combined method that we are going to use from the lecturing as well as the demonstration method. So it is giving uh, more explanation and more um, uh, creative thinking to the student. This is the lecture method that we had already discussed for a point that uh, traditional method, shock and talk method, teacher-centered method, teacher is active, one-way communication and is to use in a large group and save time and manage, uh, money. That is the lecture method that we are already discussed. In the demonstration doing method, pre-plan, learner can see and hear. More sense organs is involved, easy to understand, develop psychomotor and cognitive domain and lead experience from the concrete to abstract. This is the demonstration and lecture method that we had already discussed. So the lecture come demonstration method, which will be a combined of the doing method as well as the teacher and student centered method. Next slide, please. So lecture and demonstration method is a simple method, easy to embed concrete knowledge to abstract experience. Experiment and explanation is going on simultaneously. Similarly, it will be goes on and instructor has the relevant questions. Student remains active participant. The purpose gaining learning, problem solving, verify the facts and developing the scientific skills. When compared to the lecturing and compared to the demonstration, it will be giving more uh, effect to the students for getting more interacted or more involved in the uh, stu uh, study matter. The characteristics, visibility and clear out, convincing and rehearsal, supplemented with other teaching methods, asking relevant questions, neat and clean, simple and speedy, and teacher to act as a performer. The steps of lecture and demonstration method. In every every methods of teaching, we have to be have a proper planning and preparation is required. And introduction of lesson, introduction part is very important for getting an ideas about the topic. And presentation while while the body of presentation we have to be have a clear cut idea and it should be in a concise manner the performance of the procedure the procedure should be in a uh, proper way and it should be visible to all the persons the blackboard finally the summary should be taken for getting the evaluation for the particular method of uh, instructions uh, then the steps uh, which is planning introduction and presentation of the subject matter, matter which we had already discussed the subject matter lesson plan, rehearsal, collection, and arrangements of apparatus, everything should be included in the planning process. Introductory, it will be a giving some explanations to the stories or the students' involvement and getting the interest. And presentation in a subject matter, it will be based on the broad basis. And the questions also must be, uh, must be asked in between that. And language must be simple and clear. Experimentation, while doing the demonstrations, it should be properly placed, uh, spaced clear and convinced demonstration should be in only in one apparatus and it should be in a working condition also experiment should be have a simple and it will be a speedy ma manner because the time should be constrained and finally the blackboard work will be demonstrations to sum summarize some of the principles while demonstrating we have to be have the blackboard should be kept inside for uh, explaining about the principles or uh, such uh, uh, points should be included in the blackboard Suggestions for improving the lecture and demonstration method. The clear knowledge of the theory and practical will be included for the demonstration and use audio visual aids whenever it is required for getting more interest and attraction towards the uh, participants. Experimental demonstration should be easy and according to understanding the level of the students. Uh, prior to the demonstration, he should try to uh, 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 experiment himself and clear all related doubts. Help the students should be taken while performing the experiments and should give small responsibilities for conduction of the experiment. Next, we can move on for the discussion method. It has already discussed in the uh, last section, that is a uh, uh, group discussion method. So the discussion method, we have to be move on for the questions arises, what has to be discussed. The word is crude, which means uh, discussion, which will be explained or shake or strike. That is the uh, completely, we have to be uh, involving the participants to motivate themselves and they have to be more involved in their uh, discussion part. So discussion is an activity for sitting, talking about the specific or subject. It ensures maximum participations uh, as a characteristic. It was the opportunity to criticize and evaluate logical and meaning criticism should be accepted. 
and they keep the teachers as a guide. The role of the teacher will be very limited, but they have to be act as in uh, chairperson or chairman or moderator for uh, uh, participation of this. Uh, and they have to be managed with this uh, classes or managed with the uh, discussions. But the student participation is very important and they have to be criticized and evaluated. Planning for conducting, the teacher should be guide for the research. The teacher is not act as an active role and she is act as a guide for discussion. Proper objectives can be defined. Everyone in the group discussion given the opportunity to talk and should be a group involvement should be needed and encourage the students to participating for the discussion. Decide, then the steps that is decide the topic and scope of a discussion, narrow it down and within the time constraint, it should be completed. Pick, a, pick the starting question so that the discussion has to be progressed and in a way that we have to meet our objective. Be prepared for this discussion for what all are the objectives that we have to be meet during the particular topic regarding the discussion. Make an arrangement and it should be in a manner which is uh, required for each of the person has to be uh, uh, get uh, some uh, in involvement in that uh, discussion. Move from known to unknown, manage personality and summarize the topic. Next, we can move on for the laboratory method. Laboratory method is a complete uh, demonstration method that is uh, using the uh, data or materials or uh, material things to produce better understanding of the subject matter or lesson, learning by doing. It's a complete uh, demonstrating method or a completely doing method where the student participation is more involved and using reality instead of simple. They are facing the reality. Within the reality, they are going to do it in the laboratory methods. The purpose to provide first-hand experience, uh, di direct experience to the learner uh, by getting the scientific laboratory experiences and they are getting the solution for the problems. Uh, experience and actual situations have been- Excuse me, laboratory ma Yeah. Uh, ma'am, yes. try to wrap up the session, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, ma'am. This is going to ah, come. Yes, okay, okay. The nature of experience that is concrete experience, reflection or observations, abstract conceptualization, and active experimentation. So next uh, steps is preparation, actual work, and uh, cumulative activities. So that is the complete steps uh, we have to be uh, work out in the particular area wherever we are going to conduct the laboratory experiments. Next, the methods of teaching laboratories, self-preparation, right explanation should be required. Uh, stating, uh, starting with the experiments, handling the instruments, ex uh, explaining the observations, and we have to write a report. Lab safety should be checked and asking the doubts and clarifying the questions of the methods of teaching. So techniques, preparations, we had already have an objective and plan of work, initiate the student presenting problems together with effective methods for solution, prepare the plan with cooperations of the students, consider the objectives, not wasting the time, allow the time for maximum use of laboratory works. Workplaces, that period will be demonstration uh, practice of the skills and nursing procedures. Ensure an effective workplaces that may be adequate equipment and facilities included basic tools. They must be adequately supply specimens and material. It should be sufficient space, light and ventilation is required while the working places. So finally, this evaluations, we have to be evaluate how much is the effective and how much is opportunities getting by the students for imparting the knowledge to put into the practice. Okay, advantages, there are some advantages that is learning by doing. So it's more uh, student-centered, developing the power of observations and reasoning, develop scientific attitude, and gives training in organizing data gathered from real material objectives. That is other importance that we have to be seen in the laboratory method. From the limitations, where is poor planning, lack of directions of the teacher may result in wasting of time and create complications. Lack of budget can create Insecurity in teaching regarding the laboratory equipment. There may be having chance of getting the equipment uh, usage will be very, uh, very, very inefficient to the students. So that's uh, some difficulties that we can able to see in the case of this uh, the laboratory works. Okay. Thank you. So I'm concluding my topic. This is some of the traditional methods that we are commonly using for the teaching and learning strategies. So any, uh, thank you for giving these opportunities for taking these classes for this session. Uh, any queries or any can, any clarifications?
thank you so much ma'am okay thank you ma'am thank you ma'am thank you okay uh swati tripathi has asked a question what are the basic differences between the panel discussion and symposium i hope so dr bakupali it is your session you can explain in one or two minutes ah uh, kindly raise the question once again madam what are the basic difference between the panel discussion and symposium yeah uh, symposium deals with uh, actually controversial topics and uh, panel discussion may come up with uh, certain uh, ethical issues or dilemmas which are which which are uh, uh, supposed to be practice oriented okay sir okay. yeah i hope so his answer was reasonable yes thank you sir and, thank you so much and uh, symposium uh, and one more thing symposium poses yes. symposium poses a, a prepared way of a talk means the every individual in the symposium uh, expert individuals will put forth their own views but in panel discussion the topics are allotted to each panelist in a different way means uh, there there is no clash between uh, each panelist in the panel discussion but whereas in the symposium that may be a common topic which is for all yeah okay, thank so you thank you so much sir uh, i hope swati tripathi your uh, doubt has been cleared thank you for the question and dr vakubali thank you for the answer also i would like to extend my warm welcome to the next speaker mr adi chako tamas clinical instructor emergency department pravarnia call hospital kuwait to take over the sessions on various methods of teaching session 3 over to you sir can hear me no yes sir we can hear you is your slide is also visible to us you can proceed so my name is yeah thank my you my name is ab ab chako thomas i am from uh, kuwait working as a clinical instructor especially in emergency department and uh, critical care unit also so uh, because of the lack of time i am just uh, uh, going to my topics uh, this session uh, means we need to know about uh, the role play what is the describe the role play and uh, understand about the micro teaching and um, problem solving method then identify the meaning of the project based method this for, uh, for uh, uh, aspects we need to discuss uh, we need to think of first one is role play we know that the role play is very important uh, in the method of teaching okay it's a um, uh means i so uh, there is a question about what is the uh, new uh, method of uh, teaching and all this role play also uh, we are using uh, as a new method uh, or of teaching uh, traditionally we are using but we are uh, adding uh, some more new points and new uh, means uh, uh, options like uh, artificial intelligence and all so it, like a new method Uh, definition role play is a relatively new educational technique in which people spontaneously act out problems of human relations and analyze the enhancement with the help of other role players and observers so you can uh, see here uh, it is uh, clearly uh, sorry uh, you can see the in this picture it is clearly mentioned about the uh the uh, story uh, no need to explain uh, here we can see i hear and i forgot i see and i remember i do and i understand the ultimate thing is we have to understand the thing uh, not only uh, remember we have to understand what we are uh, means uh, uh, expressing or showing uh, here we can see this uh, children are uh, doing with the uh, means uh, their own mind so they can feed the, the content or the topic in their uh, means in their memory 
so uh, this uh, portion is uh, uh, told uh, told uh, was told by uh, uh, confucius he, he was a chinese uh, philosopher so the uh, the same thing only we are here also we are using so the purpose we can see uh, to convey information you know that uh, to develop situations for analysis to prevent alternative course of action then to prepare for meeting uh, future uh, situations to develop understanding of other view points uh, last one increasing their insight to typical way of uh, feeling uh, with them so uh, we know that these are the main purpose means uh, uh, we have to convey convey the informations also uh, means we have to uh, uh, analyze the particular situations uh, then uh, we have to uh, plan a proper uh, course of action and we have to uh, develop uh, understanding of uh, uh, others viewpoint also we have to include in that so uh, principles includes uh, should be flexible should be stimulated to think the group does the assigning and not one person recur rehearsal to uh, produce effective outcome and analyzing and evaluating evaluation is essential to achieve maximum learning benefit role play should be in brief uh, no need to explain more it is clearly mentioned and uh, that the role play is uh, very useful for a small uh, uh, group of uh, students and uh, it is uh, uh, effective and uh, we know that uh, it will uh, means uh, uh, it will uh, when uh, once it be, uh, will uh, useful for their uh, uh, activities especially for uh, presenting uh, especially presenting some uh, role plays in the hospitals and all so we can see the different types there are two types socio dharma and the psycho dharma socio dharma means we know that it involves situations uh, of more than one person and it deal with the problems related to the majority of group and uh, psycho dharma also we can see that it is related to the uh, concerned with the unique need and the problem of a particular individual uh, uh, understood no uh, here we can see the different steps of um, uh, uh, role play uh, selection of a problem we know that preparation is very important define the problem to be considered to all the students and uh, uh, create a readiness for the role uh, here we can see construction of a uh, role play situation so we need to establish a situation and we need to uh, means uh, casting the uh players means uh, casting the characters and a brief and a warm up we need to uh, do finally uh, means role playing action we need to do okay so action means uh, we can involve the audience analyzing uh, and a discussion uh, finally evaluating the uh, performance of the uh, problem solving also we can do then we can see about the values values means develop skills in the uh, leadership interviewing and social interaction then uh, develop the sensitive uh, sensitivity to others feeling then develop skills in group problem solving then develop ability to observe and analyzing the situations also then practicing selected uh, practice selected behavior in a real life situation without the stress of making mistake so these are the uh, values in the role play so what are the teachers roles that also we can uh, see here provide teachers with the opportunity to note individual uh, student needs uh, then assist student in meeting her own needs uh, through uh, suggestions encourage independent thinking and actions teacher can correct errors and use role play for specific teaching on the particular subject then there are some limitations also 
uh, for the members means in insecurity of the members. Then it's a time consuming. Then ineffective performance on the part of uh, a part of the role players and uh, uh, cannot be used successfully till group understand uh, and accepts it's a method of uh, teaching. So means the group also should uh, uh, means actively participate and uh, uh, the core uh, theme should know uh, properly then only in the group can perform the uh, role play pro properly and it should be effective. Then role play is relatively new technique where uh, the people act out spontaneously to relate to human uh, reactions and uh, analyze the en enhancement. If uh, criteria uh, of a role play is uh, fulfilled, then it will be definitely influence the student uh, learning and would retain for longer. Period. Next one is micro teaching. Micro teaching is the uh, teacher's education technique, which allows teachers to apply clearly defined teaching skills to carefully prepare lessons in a planned series of five to 10 minutes encounter with a small group of real students, often with, the, with an opportunity to observe the result on, uh, on the videotape. Uh, so uh, it's, uh, say, uh, it's told by uh, Bush, uh, means uh, it is clearly, uh, we can see that um, uh, means within the particular time, uh, like less than uh, 20 minutes uh, uh, and uh, it's, um, like uh, and, uh, less than 10 minutes, according to the uh, need of the uh, audience, uh, we can conduct the micro teaching and uh, it contain le uh, means uh, less uh, number of individual also. So, uh, the purpose includes to improve teaching skills. Next one, to improve skills on uh, skills of public speaking, to view the topics, update the knowledge to enable the uh, teacher to concise. And we, we know that an organized way of planning to master the topic, to improve specific skills, to master specific knowledge, to change routines, to teach time management, to cover syllabus and uh, incidental health education also we can uh, conduct based on this uh, micro teaching. So there are some uh, steps my, uh, for the micro teaching. First one is uh, uh, planning. Uh, involved, uh, it involves the selection of topic and uh, related content. Means uh, we have to act, uh, activities are planned in a logical sequence. Uh, such that the maximum applications of the component of a skill is possible. Uh, we can we know that we have to plan it clearly and based on the plan we have to teach. Means we know that uh, uh, um, this uh, uh, means the trainee or the teacher use, uh, uh, use the components of the skill in a suitable situation. Uh, then uh, the person can modify means uh, her behavior uh, as per the demand of the situation in the class. Also, we know that uh, should have a courage and confidence in handling, means uh, uh, handling the particular situation. Then after that, we know that uh, the important of the feedback, information about the teacher trainee performance, we need to, uh, means uh, we need to get strength as well as the weakness about uh, her performance. So from evaluators uh, and at the same time, uh, we have to uh, get from the pupils uh, uh, remark and the self-evaluation from uh, uh, video recording also, we can consider uh, for the feedback. Uh, next one is replan. 
means uh, the uh, based on this feedback and all the teacher training they plans his lesson uh, and uh, need to improve the uh, points or if needed we can remove some uh, uh, points and she can prepare a uh, proper uh, lesson and uh, 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 she can uh, do it skillfully than the previous attempt then uh, after a plan we can uh, means uh, do the reteaching and we know that uh, this reteaching means uh, uh, we have to consider the same group of students uh, uh, so uh, means uh, they have they can give the uh, more suggestions and all uh, so as well as we can uh, reteach to the other group also uh, we can consider then uh, re feedback it is very important uh, means we need to notice the behavior of the audience uh, and uh, uh, based on the modification how much uh, this uh, uh, micro teaching is effective for the audience that also we need to notice uh, these are the steps for micro teaching phases uh, we know that uh, there are uh, different phases for the uh, micro teaching so first one is knowledge acquisition phase uh, and the skill as acquisition phase and uh, transfer phase of uh, micro teaching so first one is knowledge acquisition phase uh, here we can see that the student teacher attempt to acquire knowledge about the skill it is its rationale uh, its role in classroom and its component behavior she must have good uh, review of uh, literature also next one is skill acquisition phase uh, here also you can plan uh, mic uh, micro lessons for practicing demonstration uh, skill then uh, you can practice the teaching skill through my mic uh, micro teaching cycles and continue his effort till he attain mastery level so uh, based on the practice only he can uh, attain the uh, that particular level uh, then finally uh, the transfer phase of the micro teaching after attaining mastery and the command over each of the skills the teacher trainee integrate all these skills and transfer to actual classroom training so there are a lot of advantage a few advantage we can discuss uh, it has a, a, a skilled supervision it give constructive feedback it has the component skilled approach uh, here the activity of the teaching as a whole is uh, broken down for the learning purpose into the uh, into its individual components and it increase the confidence of the uh, teacher learner and teacher also so it it is a vehicle for continuous uh, training for both beginners and uh, senior teachers it enables projection of model instructional skills it provides expert supervision and constructive feedback and it provide for repeated practice without adverse uh, consequence to the teacher or his students next one is disadvantage uh, here we can say it is only uh, simulated technique with the less number of persons over a short period of time uh, we can consider only a less number of people uh, it is expensive uh, to uh, procure and maintain a video recording uh, then uh, limited lecturing conduct under controlled environment then we know that uh, uh, for preparation and uh, uh, everything there is a time consuming and is so the scope is very narrow and uh, the skill also need more so uh, that is that are the disadvantage of the micro teaching so next uh, uh, method of teaching is problem solving method here we can uh, see that uh, the uh, means it is a instructional method problems uh, solving uh, uh, is an instructional method or uh, means uh, uh, 
uh, we can see that uh, the, the teacher and the student uh, at, uh, means they can attend uh, conscious, planned, and purposeful effort to uh, uh, arrive some uh, some explanation or situation to some educational educationally significant uh, means uh, difficultly uh, to identify the uh, means uh, identify or find out the solution for the uh, particular uh, problem uh, so here we can see students are presented with the problem which require them to find either a scientific or uh, technological solutions it's a student centered strategy which required student to become active participant in the learning process. Problem solving is a teaching strategy that employs the scientific method in searching for information. Uh, then uh, here also uh, means it's a system, uh, systematic approach, uh, means uh, uh, to def uh, defining the problem and creating a vast number of possible solutions without uh, judging these solutions. Another definition, problem solving is a cognitive processing uh, directed at achieving a goal where no solution method is obvious to the problem solver. Uh, here we can see according to the Skinner, problem solving is, is, a, pro uh, is a process of overcoming difficulties that appears to interfere. purpose that uh, to train the student in the act of reasoning gain and improve the knowledge of the student solve puzzling questions so uh, we will put uh, uh, means a lot of uh, uh, problem uh, uh, based uh, uh, learning techniques so they, the students can actively participate and uh, they can solve it then overcome the obstacles in the attainment of uh, objectives. That is the um, uh, purpose of this problem solving method. Step includes formation and appreciation of problem, collection of relevant data and information, then uh, organization of this particular data, then, uh, then we need to drawing uh, of conclusions and uh, after that, we have to uh, test or uh, uh, how uh, they uh, uh, made this problem uh, solved. We have to test the conclusion also. Then uh, we can see the skills also, the problem solving skill. Uh, clarify what the problem is about. Second one, brainstorm ideas. We have to uh, get different types of ideas. Uh, uh, ideas, then plan out what you are uh, going to do. Then try out the plan. After planning, we have to try. Then uh, does it solve the problem? Uh, so based on the plan, whether we can uh, uh, solve the problem or not. If yes, we can go, go to find out the outcome of the problem. If no, we have to uh, try for another plan. These are the skills for problem solving. Then, feature, essential features of the uh, problem. Problem should be meaningful, interesting, and uh, worthwhile for children. It should have some uh, correlation with life. It should have some correlation with the other subjects, if possible, and the problem should be clearly defined. The solution of the problem should be found out by the students themselves, working under the guidance and supervision of the teacher. As we discussed earlier, uh, the students have the uh, students have more role for the uh, this uh, type of uh, teaching. Uh, then it should arise out of the real need of the student. Then we can see what are the teachers' role. Uh, here we can see the teachers define the problem clearly. So all the, I mean, so the students can understand the problem and uh, 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 we can allow the student to make some suggestions uh, uh, by encouraging the students. Then uh, we can uh, uh, 
uh, get them to evaluate each suggestion carefully by encouraging uh, the students. Then we need to uh, means organize the material by proceeding and focus the problem, analyze it with a keen observation and the uh, faculty to synthesize and draw conclusion with an accuracy. These are the teachers' role. So when we are applying to the nursing uh, uh, field, I uh, mean it helps to the student to solve the similar problem in the uh, future uh, yeah, with the confidence. It uh, develop a critical thinking for the students. Uh, in the class or the group, we will develop uh, mutual understanding among the group members. It helps the caregiver or nurse to develop a skill to help the patient as uh, also uh, develop ability in the nurse to select the problem solving strategy according to the patient's ability and lifestyle. Then uh, there are some merits for this problem solving method. It serves as a preparation of uh, uh, adult life. It develops the power of critical thinking already we discussed. It makes uh, people activate uh, uh, recipient of knowledge. It develops values for or values of uh, tolerance and open mind uh, mindedness. It helps for the easy assimilation of knowledge. It helps to establish harmonious relationship between the teacher and students. Uh, there are some demerits includes the method will become monotonous. Uh, monotonous if used too frequently. The problem solving method can easily lead to the selection of uh, rival and uh, untimely topics. This is appropriate for developing uh, cognitive uh, competencies, but not for bringing about uh, effective changes. Then we know that it's a uh, time consuming. The last method is a project based method. It is a objective type of uh, uh, training. Uh, activity of an in individual pro uh, produces the tangible uh, results. Production of materials in the field of uh, clinical education. It may be uh, production of box models, unit, uh, solving the problems of uh, patient exam. So we know that these projects are, uh, I mean, so it, it will take time to prepare, but it is very useful. Uh, means the students or the uh, teacher trainees, they can, um, uh, they can take the time and they can, uh, means as a group, they can, uh, prepare the projects, uh, different type of models uh, like uh, crops. Uh, then uh, they can uh, solve the problems of the patients. Uh, they can use. Okay, so a project is a wholehearted, purposeful act uh, completed in a natural setting. Uh, it was said by Dr. William. Uh, then uh, Stevenson uh, uh, said that a project is a problematic act carried out, carried to uh, completion in a, in its natural setting. So there are uh, some uh, means uh, different phases for the project based method that includes purp uh, purposing, then uh, uh, planning, executing, and uh, evaluating or a judging, that also we can see. First one is purposing. Student has to originate the problem by own. Student be motivated to reach the goal. Then get the approval from the teacher. Next one is planning. It should be cover the subject matter and the chief responsibility of the project should rest with the student. A good plan means we have to, uh, means the student should make a blueprint, should be critically examined prior to the proposal. 
directions for a data collection is uh, specified. Next one, after uh, making the blueprint, and uh, means uh, after uh, after the proper planning, uh, means uh, we can means the students can execute the plan. Means um, provide the scope of scope for creative expressions uh, through self activity project should be completed students should see practical values of the project also then finally uh, judging or evaluation so standard for self evaluation final criteria for student learning actual situation and uh, practical value needed to be understood then uh, there are some advantages uh, of the project the method includes arouse and maintain students' interest, give freedom to think and act by the student as per the guidance, establish definite tangible goal and achieve, help to know individual differences, help to think logically and scientifically, teach us uh, to evaluate and judge his work, group project help to Develop team spirit and cooperation. Also, uh, student centered method, method of uh, instruction. Then we can see some uh, disadvantages also over consumption of time, it costly and non availability of the suitable materials, overlapping of subject matters, and over development of individuality under development of group responsibilities also. So uh, we discussed uh, about uh, four uh, uh, methods of teaching. So first one we discussed about the role play. Second one we discussed about micro teaching and uh, problem solving method also we discussed and uh, uh, project based method. These are the uh, methods I mean, so once the uh, students are applying in, uh, yeah, during their curriculum, it is very uh, useful for uh, developing their knowledge uh, uh, as well as the skill. So we can hope uh, we have to apply uh, based on the modern advancement of the technology. We can, uh, uh, we can apply the technologies to this uh, uh, method of teaching. Uh, means we, we can uh, improve the utilization also uh, uh, and the students will get uh, more uh, knowledge and uh, skill from this type of uh, method of teaching. Thank you very much for your uh, uh, attendance and compression. Thank you so much, sir. Now, I would like to welcome our last speaker of the day, Dr. Sharon Sara Koshi, Professor, Department of Obstetrics and Gynecological Nursing, Kim's College of Nursing, Trivandrum, Kerala, to take over the session on Innovative Teaching Strategies, Session 1. Good evening. Hi, ma'am. Yes, you are audible and your uh, screen is also yes, visible. Okay, okay. Okay, we can carry over the session, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Sushmita, ma'am. Thank you all, myself, Dr. Sharon, from King's College of Nurse to Vandra. This is the last session, and we are moving to the innovative teaching strategies. I think you all have attended uh, the normal, I mean, traditional methods of teaching till now. So changes in nursing, healthcare, and education were and continued pedagogical innovation. Faculty are challenged to develop many innovative strategies in the clinical and simulation laboratory research. Innovation is vital for improving the quality of nursing care and the sustainability. So we know. So uh, we, we need to change the faculty, teaching faculty in nursing or any other uh, disciplines if you are uh, thinking means we, ne we need a change. We need to uh, improve or we need to attract or attend, be attentive. I mean, the, lecture, the learners to be, uh, to be attentive and uh, they need the result, okay, isn't it? So the innovation is the act of constructive thinking, grouping knowledge, skills, original and rational ideas, attitude for the new. 
nursing education a lot of innovation are taking place in the area of teaching and learning and today i am dealing with pbl that is problem based learning programmed instruction and clinical methods of teaching so we can see uh, in a brief okay i will take uh, in first problem based learning for pbl it's an alternative to traditional classroom learning i think uh, most of them uh, here we have the faculties or principals so i think uh, most of you uh, thought like this means i think um, uh, already we started this type of learning advanced the technology we started pbl uh, different way we started in this model the students engage complex challenging problems and collaboratively work together their solution that's the main aspect of problem we are providing one problem and they need to solve the learners or the uh, student need to solve so the pbl process was pioneered by barrows and tambin in the medical school program at master university and they disenchanted students who perceive the vast amount of material presented in the first 3 years as little relevance to the practice of medicine the pbl curriculum was developed in order to stimulate learning means as the origin of pbl process well compared to traditional medical education they have identified the pbl curriculum was developed to stimulate the learning right in the students so the in in a simple way we can tell pbl students are assigned a problem students identify what they need to know to solve means they will think how they can solve the issue student learn and apply to solve the problem that's a basic aspect in pbl so we can see the definition characterized by self directed active learning starting an ill structured problem before any instruction so we are just providing a scenario to the specific group of students learners probe deeply into the issues searching for connections grappling with the complexity and using the knowledge to fashion so they need to identify how much complex how much difficult the situation of a specific patient or some any other uh, general uh, issues in the uh, present scenario uh, or the in our uh, political or any other kind an excellent instructional method that can cultivate students critical thinking develop their ability to analyze and solve problem that's the definition this is another definition student centered approach in which students learn about a subject by working in group to solve an open ended problem so it's a group activity that's a here you can see say traditional way the teacher is active the learners are uh, simply pass okay and here also you can see uh, both sides so traditional learning and pbl so tradi traditional learning told what we need to know means for examination purpose the teacher may prepare the notes or lesson planning or daily planning and the students will write or listen the notes and they will pay heart memorize it problem assigned to illustrate how to use okay. but in pbl the problem assigned identify what we need to know learn and apply to solve the problem so they know how they can apply the uh, issues means how they can solve the issues and they will come to know what the situation and what the principles or the management behind that problem pbl can be explained as the learning that results from the process of working towards understanding and resolution of a problem teaching learning method that include the study of clinical cases small discussion group collaborative independent study hypothetical deductive reasoning everything may include as pb and uh, the principal idea behind is that the starting point should be a problem query or a puzzle that's a simple very simple definition by dj out and the principles we will including mainly for contextual constructive collaborative and self -led. so contextual means real everyday problem we can select for pbl uh, issues or the um, basic scenario and the learning material is to be we can apply from the real life situation. constructive means what the student centered approach it means the student can construct their own knowledge from their basic uh, uh, non from their non things they can assess the ideas then collaborative means they can uh, we, the people can stimulate the student to co construct knowledge to share idea and know and self directed means without the guide or without the uh, guidance of a teacher the people promote self directed learning skill among the students then moving to the process so the simple way problem will create some ideas and they will search for some knowledge 
the learning issues will be created at the course of action. So they know uh, what, which, what's the condition. And the characteristics, students work in small collaborative group. We know PBL, we are providing to the students, the student to be in a group. Increase the knowledge by identifying the objective, means with a specific objective only we can provide people. Students engaging in a self-directed work, students participating in discussion, means we are dividing 100 students or 70 students into seven group and in, they will uh, think and they will uh, solve the issues. Provide students with the greater access to information, support, resources. We need to provide some resources to the students. And the learning is driven by challenging open-ended problem. The learning is student-centered. We already discussed. And the role of facilitator or guide subject. There should be a facilitator or the tutor for just guiding, not complete control, just guiding the students in PBL. And the goals of PBL, number one, becomes effective, collaborative function, so the students' intrinsic motivation. This is not uh, forcing them to do. They need to know. If they intrinsically or in generally, they need to motivate to learn or identify or solve. Construct an extensive and flexible knowledge base, foster increased retention of knowledge, develop effective problem solving skills, and develop self direction, lifelong learning. And here, the dynamics. Dynamic means what may occur as a quality. The PBL means uh, we know the, the normal traditional method, the active teacher and the passive student. But here, the facilitator will be present and the student to be active and the problem we are providing, and finally, they should solve the problem. That's the dynamics. And here, the five R's of PBL. Trigger means to know, the student need to know, understand, and be able to do. And how deeply do they need to know, understand? Means how much aware or how much they know the solving of the specific problem. That is right. And relevance. Why is addressing, handling, selling? It means anything relevant. To that specific problem is how much and the relationship why or what can help or what means from uh, what connection what resources or which resources they can use that is relationship and the result how will thinking be demonstrated knowledge understanding and awareness means if they have, they got the result means some solution if they find out means how they can communicate and the reflection how can this experience be turned into expertise that will help students address or solve other kinds means any another problem is they can recommend or uh, they need to uh, further use this result that's a five us and the basic steps students in groups and a real problem to be present and student identify what is known in relation to the problem and what information is needed what strategies or next step to take in order and the, and the result to be explained and this is p5bl that is P5, people, problem, process, product, and project based learning. So, the P5 BL approach was a learning strategy introduced at Stanford School of Engineering in 1992, an initiative to offer the graduate students from the engineering, architecture, and construction discipline to implement their skills in a cross disciplinary collaborative teamwork experience. That was a different approach they started in 1993. Here you can see the eight essential elements in PB. And is audience, product, and the curriculum development, 21st century skills, the need to know, driving question, student voice and choice, in-depth inquiry, reflection and revision. That means the elements may come from the our objectives. It means people were providing to increase the student need to think, creative thinking. That is the 21st century skill means the advanced where they need to think. Then problem-based learning cycle. This is important aspect. Number one phase or step is apply. Planning effective use of learning means we or the facilitator need to know the objective of the specific PBL session. And the second is experiencing the student side, learner side, how they are experiencing this activity season. And the third is sharing, exchanging reactions or observations means while doing the PBL, the student need to know what's the, uh, if they're providing some uh, case scenario means they will identify, oh, okay, the, these all, with this clinical features or the, these complaints, the patient admitted in the emergency or the casualty department, with, from there, they will identify, uh, they will search for the uh, scan report or radiology, everything, 
So like this, they can share the information and processing means discussing patterns and dynamics. Here, they can come to the conclusion. So what may be, which system is affected, the pathophysiology they can identify. And finally, generalizing, that is developing real world principles. So, so the steps to problem solving, uh, problem-based learning approach. Here, in step one, explore the issue, gather necessary information, learn new concepts, principles, and skills about the proposed topic. And second, state what is known, the individual student they already know about the scenario and list what area they are lacking information. Step three, define the issue, frame the problem. And step four, research the knowledge. Means we can provide some uh, computer facility, internet facility, or some textbooks we can provide. And investigate solution, list possible action, solution to the problem. Then step six, present and support the chosen solution. And the last is review performance. Students must evaluate their performance and improvement for the next then pre case scenario, how we can prepare a scenario. So the scenario should provoke some interest and challenge in the student. They need to know the problem, okay? So we need to uh, assess or we need to think, we need to refer that thought should be, we need to create. Formulated in a clear and concrete manner. Lead to formulation of objective by the students which are consistent with the objective. There should be a balance between the simplicity and complexity in problems and that means the terms to be clear and legible, but it should be something uh, standard of the uh, connected with their behavioral term, the object. And the members to be ready, to be ready in a PBL session, group leader, tribe, group members, tutor, and a chair. So we can, uh, uh, very fast, we can see what are the role of the group leader. So keeping discussion goal oriented, the group leader need to control the PBL session or the guiding the PBL step clarifying the discussion, stimulating participation, guiding the documentation. And the role of the scribe, the scribe need to record the points. Is any important uh, conclusion the group may come to an end means, scribe cannot help a group to order their thought, participate in the discussion, record the resources used by the group, making clean and short notes. And role of the tutor, that means, tutor means uh, from our teaching side, teaching faculty can support. So what's the role? Engage group members to participate, assist the chair with group dynamics. It means in group, there may be some uh, conflict uh, issues may present. Okay, So that we that need to be uh, solved. Plays a key role in PBL. Backbone of the PBL is it makes learning student-centered, facilitate learning instead of dispensing knowledge. And the chair, the chair head the group through the process. Encourage all group members to participate and maintain group dynamic, ensure group keeps the task in hand. And group members all, so all members can participate in the discussion, listen and respect the contribution of others, and ask open questions. And we can follow one session plan. Okay. So the teachers were preparing lesson plan for daily classes. So like that, if you're planning to complete your portion to a specific day or specific students, you can prepare the session plan here for five minutes. Normally, uh, we are conducting uh, two hours or four hours any time we can plan. So here for five minutes, it's an introduction. In this period, the student need to identify the problem or creating awareness on the nature of the problem. And the second 10 minutes, I mean second, that is it, next 10 minutes, give instruction for the activity. They need to list the problem. This period, list the problem and they need to arrive some conclusion. And the third one that is next 20 minutes, they need to identify what are the causes of that specific problem or any uh, uh, that issue means which uh, problem the patient is admitted. Okay, that condition they need to identify. And next 20 minutes, they need to prepare the alternative, identify the nature of the problem, assess the alternative and use the best selected alternative. And next 30 minutes, analyzing the problem, identifying the nature, executing the solution. And finally, the whole, whole group need to prepare the complete condition, disease condition with the pathophysiology, clinical features, everything. And they can present at the last of the session or the 15 minutes. And finally, the teacher can evaluate the each group perform in 20 minutes. Okay. 
and advantages of PBL knowledge, then interdisciplinary. They can require accessing and using information from a variety of subject domain and the development of lifelong learnings. Okay. And next, uh, we can move to the program instruction. Next, new strategy in our teaching guide. All uh, strategies control mm -hmm. the programmed instruction or PA, that is programmed mm -hmm. instruction or programmed learning as devised to make the teaching learning process more human mm -hmm. by making it more effective and mm -hmm. another technique we are using the instructional format used in the teaching machine is known as program instruction or program learning and this technology became a popular subject of educational research in late 1950 by B.F. Skinner coined the term technology of teaching 1968 and he described PA as an application of science of learning to the Today's task of instruction. And simply, it is the individualized instruction. And uh, here, the content is broken up into small units and presented in a series of interactive frame. And here, B.F. Skinner developed the characteristics of effective program material in 1954. And it's a definition of program instruction. So, briefly, I can tell. So, it's, uh, presenting new subject matter to the students in a graded sequence of control sense. And here, the computers and other types of teaching machines we are using to present the material and the definition by Columbia Encyclopedia. And the aims and objectives here you can see that to help the students in learning by doing, if they can uh, do step by step instruction we are providing, and they need to self uh, something uh, self learning, self directed learning to provide the learners situation so that they can learn at their own pace to help students to learn in the absence of a teacher to help students in assessing their own performance themselves. And the basic principles in program instruction, number one, small steps, the principle of small steps. So here we, uh, we know we are providing the subject matter in sequence and meaningful, very small frames of time. And active response, that means we are providing in very simple way and in step by step, so they will be very active and then they, they can uh, further Keep them active and meaningfully busy throughout the process. And reinforce it. the learner understand the frame or the question. They can immediately they can respond. That means we are providing correct response to the each question. Principle of self pacing. That means the learners we are providing an opportunity to learn at their own pace. The learner can respond and move from one frame to another at their own speed of learning. Then principle of student testing. Student testing here. The learner has to leave the record of his own response because he is required to write a response for each frame. And we are providing correct source of study or the result we are providing. So that's the principles we need to follow in program. And here's the meaning. And we already uh, discussed the created by the Skinner and small step we need to provide. And each step is learned before moving on to more difficult material. So from basic to complex, we need to provide the questions and they will answer, they will get the result. And broadly, the program instruction. We have four methods, linear or extrinsic programming, branch or intrinsic programming, method is programming, fourth one is ruling, ruling system of programming. So the basic are three types, that is linear, branching, and methodics represent the actual PA method and the ruling system is just extension of the linear or branching. And so mainly we are uh, discussing linear and branching. So from the name itself, you can uh, come to know the linear means the continuous way. The branching means something interconnected. So linear or intrinsic programming considered directly related with the theory of apparent conditioning and is based on the assumption that the human behavior can be shaped or conditioned step by step. So the linear or extrinsic programming is controlled by some external uh, teacher, external guide, and based on the apparent conditioning theory, in that theory, we can see the human behavior can be shaped or conditioned. So we can provide some reinforcement for each their set. And the linear sequence, uh, we have some frames. The control is quite extensive by the programmer. The linear programming is also preferred as extensive. 
And here, one example, you can see the mouth uh, is an important organ for, for the digestive system. And the other parts, the mouth, stomach are responsible for digestion. And the small intestine help in digestion and absorption of the food. And dash are responsible for absorption of water. The rectum helps in temporary stage of dash. So we are providing an example for one linear programming. And the student or the learner can complete here. And frame two, here also, like uh, linear structure, we are providing this an example. And this manner, the student may proceed on their self-learning path by going from one frame to another, arranged in a sequential and systematic. And second is branching or intrinsic programming uh, developed by Norman Crowder, an American neuropsychologist. And here, it provides an intrinsic arrangement in the sense it is not controlled by an external programmer. Here you can see, the meaning of the concept they will study, the student will study, and the definition. If the definition the learner can't study or they can't remember means, again, we will provide one test and the response is negative. Again, the learner may need to go to the meaning of the concept. Like this, it is interconnectedly connected. Okay, it is arranged. Already it is arranged. So that is intrinsic. And moving to the mathematics. Mathematic program learned. By Gilbert, is an originator. He is the originator of the concept of mathematics program instruction, the systematic application of reinforcement theory to the analysis and construction of complex repertory. So here, here you can see this example: three into four, twelve. Twelve is a product. Then three and four are called what? So like this, mathematics application we can. Then rule of system here. The premise that the verbal subject material which appears in a program can be grouped into two class, that is, in rule from the term rule, rules, that is for rules and yet for the example. A rule may be a large number of things, that is, definition, mathematical formula, empirical formula, etc. And here the rules for statements of some generality, and these substitution instances are called example. So the algebra A plus B is equal to B plus A, that is a rule. Summarize compactly a number of substitution instances. And the example 7 plus 2 is equal to 2 plus 7, like okay. So algebra A plus B is at the rule, and we are applying that's the example 7 plus 2 is equal to 2 plus 7. That is rule and system of program. And the development of program instruction mainly three phase preparatory phase, development phase, evaluatory. Okay. So in preparatory phase, the basic points we can see that is. Total six points, assortment of the content or topics to be brought. So, what type of content or what's the objectives of the aspect we are providing to the learner? So, in preparatory phase, the very prominent phase, almost uh, planning and beginning, everything may conduct. And here, in assortment, uh, the, some question we need to ask. That means, is any program already available or does it suit to the curriculum? That question may come in under assortment. And describing the learners, that means the programmer need to know the basic aspect of or the learners in terms of age, gender, socioeconomic status, intellectual level, everything need to know. And detecting objectives in behavioral terms, that means we, need, uh, we know the domains, three domains, cognitive, psychomotor, affective domain. So in three domains, we need to uh, detect the objectives. Then entry behavior of the learner means the uh, a new a learner may come with a specific behavior. So that is the entry behavior or the initial behavior before joining the program. And finally, the terminal behavior also we need to Then developing the specific outlines of the content. So here, the, uh, preparing the content, we need to uh, ask, prepare on basis of, uh, basis on the experience and the observation of the related course. Any related course, they already completed means the basis on that we can prepare the content. And designing the criterion test. Criterion reference test means we are assessing for the effectiveness of the program. Means finally, after a provided months after completing the program, we can assess the feedback from the learner. And second is developmental phase. Here we have three steps. Designing of the frames, priming and sequencing of the frames. Designing of the frames here, the main instructional material we are providing to the learner at the time. That means a simple words to full page or full paragraph content we can prepare. And the priming, priming means 
we can develop means uh, if we are planning to uh, providing in depth knowledge to the learner means we need to again we need to uh, refine the content or the frame and sequencing of the frame means in that matrix approach rule up approach and egg rule up okay. so uh, matrix means we know uh, we know matrix means the tabular okay so in tabular form we can prepare the programs that means sub concept or minor concepts what we are setting uh, to provide to the learner and rule up approach means uh, same as rule up means some rules or examples we have provided. Rule up means rule and example. The deductive reason. Egg rule means examples and this inductive reason. So rule up means first we are providing the rule and we are providing the example. That is deductive reasoning in egg rule. First we are providing the examples and then uh, connecting with the rules we, we need to generate. That is inductive reason. And editing of the Finally, in editing, technical accuracy editing, program technique editing, and composition. And finally, the evaluative phase. Here, individual tryout, small group tryout, field tryout or testing, then evaluate. So individual tryout means uh, for few learners. Say for minimum four learners, we can together, we can provide the program. Then small group means we can uh, increase the number uh, up to uh, eight or 10, 10 members we can provide and uh, we are doing this for uh, we we can uh, for improving i'm sorry to interrupt um i'm just uh kindly wrap up the session in one or two minutes ma'am so evaluation and the limitation uh here you can see and third is clinical teaching but i think uh most of you know what is what are the basic clinical teaching method we are using it's a time limited process by the teacher and student create an established partnership within a Shared environment. So it is an individualized or group teaching to the nurses. Okay. And some guidelines for preparing, selecting teaching method. It should be appropriate to the objective and based on the purpose of learning and according to the capacity of the student and depend upon the resources. And another main thing, the teacher's ability to use it effectively and creatively. And the mothers in this in clinical teaching method, we have three models: traditional model, perceptive model and associated or partnership model. Okay. So in traditional model, the clinical instructors is an integral part. So here you can see the traditional faculty supervised model. Uh, commonly we are using in the clinical teaching for one, two, three students. And the second is preceptor model. So preceptor model, we have four aspects. One minute preceptor, naps, activated demonstration, and the fourth is aunt mini pattern bracketing. Okay. In briefly, we can see one minute preceptoring technique means Five uh, micro skills we need to assess. Okay, so get a commitment. Get a commitment means we can ask the learner or the student, what do you want to do? Okay, what uh, what uh, skill or or <clears throat> what procedure in which aspect we need to uh, assess the patient? Prop for supporting evidence. That means encourage the learner's processing and synthesis of information from the patient. Okay, that means. They need to uh, gain is what procedure on which aspect the student is going to do. This prof for supporting him. This general rule that means uh, the teacher can provide some uh, mini lecture or something and reinforce what was done right. That means by uh, uh, getting by creative thinking and by lecture means gaining the uh, knowledge. The student need to uh, confirm what was done right. Correct mistakes, then uh, we can confirm the students gain something uh, from the specific lecturing and dealing with the specific patient scenario. And the snaps here summarize relevant history and physical can find this from the history collection or detailed recordings. The student can identify the uh, diagnosis, narrow the differential diagnosis, likely relevant diagnosis. Uh, we can come together, we can come together, we can keep it. Then analyze the differential diagnosis. We can go through the main features and we can assess with the supportive uh, other documents and probe the preceptor. Means the preceptor means the uh, after the confirmation of the final diagnosis, the supporting um, faculty can support. That's a preceptor. Plan patient management and select a case related learning issue. Okay. 
that's the snaps we can follow and next is activated demonstration that is teaching a skill so with this the students relevant knowledge we can assess and we can uh, support the student demonstrate the clinical skill set an agenda for future learning opportunity and on mini pattern recognition means simply we are sending student to the clinical area when student present the chief complaint and present the diagnosis the preceptor discuss case with the student so students learn uh, the student he or she can identify everything and they can tell with the preceptor or the faculty or guide okay uh, and that is partnership model that is ctp clinical teaching partnership is a collaborative model shared by service and academia these clinical nursing specialists from the service institution and a faculty member together they can uh, educate the student and the purpose for the clinical teaching provide individualized care develop high technical competence and collect and analyze the data and uh, for meeting the needs of the client uh, improve the communication skills okay and i think that there are different methods i think most of you know it's a clinic nursing rounds nursing assignment nursing conference general report individual conference group conference nursing care plan case analysis then case okay, incident method everything so it's a clinic the process the teacher and the group of learners see a patient and they will uh, discuss the professional diagnosis and uh, the purpose is they can uh, identify or they can plan and execute some nursing care plan so here introduction phase discussion phase and evaluation so introduction means general introduction the basis of some the details of the uh, data from the patient side and discussion phase the instructor and the student responsible for the patient care it may take 30 to 40 minutes an evaluation phase where the clinic end with a summary recapitulation with the feedback from the student and uh, nursing rounds also with an overview of the certain aspect of the nursing or medical care of the patient on the ward or the selected patient for acquainting the nurses with the patient or carry out demonstration we are using the nursing rounds and steps uh, here at the bedside pre selected patient was agreed to participate we are selecting and the uh, checklist for nursing rounds we can follow Here, the instructor of the student who is caring for the patient uh, the, will be there. The staff nurse of the ward to be allowed to contribute any genuine points. At the end, the instructor concludes the discussion by giving her and the nursing uh, rounds advantages, uh, disadvantage, and nursing assignment. We are providing the a patient method of assignment. The nurse is expected to give a complete nursing care, but in some situation, general nursing measures, treatment, medication, temperature, basic aspect, we are providing some assignments. So uh, the purpose to gain the cooperation of the workers in acceptance of work to be done, and the principles uh, formulate assignment here. We can use simple, clear words, and each person time and opportunity, and ensure continuity of the patient care. Based on the principle, we can prepare the, the nursing assignment. And in assign assignment uh, in general, we have this method: case method, functional method, team nursing method, primary care method, modular method. In case method is the patient complete all this patient care delivery system and functional method means we are dividing the task and assigning to the nursing and other person team nursing means a group of healthcare workers for different skills and training and modular method means it's a combination of primary and team primary nursing method is the registered nurse who gives total patient care for four to six patient and 24 hours a day throughout the patient hospitalization for basic care and morning and report evening report means the reports may be in the form of an analysis of some aspect of service oral or written reports we can provide a nursing conference here group and individual one so group conference small group teaching method and focus on the overall development of the individual student individual and the purpose here also opportunity to the student to refine their clinical skills and the phase opening phase working phase and closing phase in opening phase students are informed prior information in the working phase the family background past and present medical history everything to be to be ready the teacher motivate the student to come forward the creative ideas putting the a closing phase from various group conferences relevant to the ward situation putting into a conclusion of the conference and process recording we can use it's an just an verbatim account of a visit between the nurse and the patient and the phases preparing the student for this process recording recording the nurse patient interaction and evaluating the interaction field trip also we can use for the teaching laboratory method already discussed is an another way the nursing care plans the normal uh, formal process we are following traditionally 
care plan provide a way of communication with nurses, their patients, and healthcare providers. Sorry, and the type of nursing care plans informal, formal, standardized, and individualized. Case analysis method also, we are involved in advanced courses and all. Here, the developing skill in reflective thinking by defining the problem, verifying facts to make it. Okay, so here we discussed the innovative teaching strategies, mainly the PBL, program instruction and clinical teaching methods. Commonly we use, I think all of you know the methods. Thank you for patient listening. Thank you all. Thank you, ma'am. That brings us to the end of day one of the faculty development program. I'd like to see you all tomorrow at 3 p.m. to continue the sessions uh, from for the day two. I'd like to thank the eminent speakers of the day, Dr. Shabandal Meseria, Dr. G.T. George, Dr. Bahubali J.G., Mr. A.B. Chako Thomas, and Dr. Sheldon Sara Koshi for making the day an educative one. Thank you so much, sir and ma'am. I Thank hope you. this day was a really educative one to the participants. See you all tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.